wait for the summer. I've been waiting too long. I'm gonna go to the seashore. Cause that's where I belong. And you know I'll think of you when I go to the beach. I'm hanging out on the boardwalk. I'm waking up with the sun. I'm catching up on the girls on. So let's begin the fun. I glad to see you. <laughs> What's happening? Everybody, everybody from around the world. This is the New York Hardcore Chronicles live. You asked for it, you got it. I hope everybody's well in your world. I hope you're doing good things and good things are coming to you. What can I say? What's up from what's up in Phoenix, man? Is it 300 degrees yet? That's right, Robbie White. Are, are you are you gonna are you gonna are you gonna lend a running commentary? Yes, the video is from 1983, and we're gonna and we're gonna talk and we're gonna talk about it. Uh, you know, you know what? I was just saying this morning uh, after the gig on Sunday. That's it for the chops. After we play on Sunday, uh, that's it. Chop game on point, right? You know my, uh, you know. Thank you, Flora. It was like a Zappa kind of, it was like a Zappa kind of show. I just, you know, can't get away with the Zappa shirt for, for a lot of the hardcore stuff, you know, but I thought I could, I thought today, you know, that I could get away with it for today, you know, but, uh, you know, I, you know, I got to say like the last Debo to pro, come on now. Oh, now, now it's, now it's a party. New York hardcore comics represent. You know, I got to say the last three shows we've done have been really, it's almost like throwback shows, you know, like big numbers, lots of people, like, it's like an echo of the, of like, wow, big numbers too, man. The fucking, you know, yes, I do. I remember the Zappa poster on Saturday. Absolutely. I do. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. Bob Riley, you know. 
I know, right? When you got you, my, <laughs> I know you got it. You got it. my. I just, I just, I just cut my chops down a little bit. Yeah, I started to look like you know, like the Ohio players, nineteen seventy three. You know, you know, Joe Frank, what's up? Hey, Gra Grappo, and you know what? Let, let, let's let's. You know, we got a lot of people coming through the show today, so uh, this is going to be really, really fun. I'm excited about today's show. I hope you. I hope you too. I hope you are too. Speaking of which, are you? I am. Are you? Are you? Are you? Fam are, you fam are you familiar with this group? Well, you know, you actually, uh, when we were, were first announcing the show, I went down the rabbit hole a little bit because I was not as familiar. And you know uh, why? You know why? Because you were busy worshiping Satan out in Long Island. That's true. You were, I, I can't you were busy I can't listening. To, you were busy listening to Manowar <laughs> and Slayer and worshiping Satan. Listen, you got to give the devil his due. They say, you know, it's but, a long. Listen, know. it's a long, hard road back, bro. But it's okay. But I, I no, I, I. You know, it's funny. It's one of those bands where you go, huh? Are you in a bunker? I, I miss this hey, are, are you? Are you? Are you in a bunker? Are you like? You know, is, is the end of the, yes, let me tell you something. The end of the world is coming and Stephen has built a bunker in, 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 uh, uh, in, in everybody's Queens. welcome to come out to the bunker. <laughs> come on. Everybody's in. welcome to come, come on into the bunker. That's yep. it. That's it. It's a bunker, bunker party tonight. Yep. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah, no, it's a beautiful day in Queens. I'm here behind closed doors and, uh, you know, just uh, it was a great, great, great weekend. It really was. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. But yes, I'm excited. This was cool. I, I like when you discover a band and you kind of go down and like, how did I miss these guys? You know, that sort of thing. And that's how I feel about the band we're about to have today. So, you, you know, I, I was trying to think of like the right way to say it on the show today. And, and you know, it'll come up a few times, but. Shows like this are really exciting and fun for me because a lot of the shows are like people I've worked with and I've, I've known, you know, I've known some people I've, I've known my whole adult life, you know, whether I've whatever done music videos with them or toured with them or or whatever, whatever. But once in a while, there'll be somebody on the show that that I don't have that personal history with. And it gives me the opportunity to, to like you said, go down the rabbit hole. And I really, I and I and, and I really enjoy doing that, uh, you know, you know one while you know with an artist. And I really, I really did with 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 these guys that are on today. Yeah, and I, I like it. it. Sort of walks that new wave line a little bit, you know. Whoa, whoa! Come on now, help me. Just up hold here. on. Hey, that's hold said, on. You know what? There we go. Uh, see that the apocalypse is coming. You know, I'm going to I'm going to bring our friends from Women of the Pit on for a second here. Hey. Bring them on. <laughs> bring Listen, them on. I, I had to break it up a little bit. This guy, he's like. <laughs> you guys, know, hey, you guys know that Steven, Steven has a bunker and everyone is welcome. That's right. I got cleaning products. Come on in. <laughs> Someone in the comments said uh, it would be a killer playlist in there. <laughs> in that, bunker. that was a good one. Actually, that was funny. And I got jungle the formula. Oh, Yo, that was shelled. funny. The bunker's getting shelled. The bunker got bombed. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's your gal. There's your gal. Flora. Oh, Flora. I love you know, her so much. Speaking, speaking of which, um, well, first, let, let's start with this real quick. Um, let's just do it. Steven, uh, yes, tell us tell us about what's going on here, and we'll segue into a couple other things. Ah, here we go. Well, this was uh, Sunday at the Organic Grill, our friend Vlad, <laughs> and uh, we had a great time. Uh, he has started an acoustic punk night that's going to be happening every so often. And uh, for this first one, uh, we had... Uh, Will Romeo, of course, who's kind of the host of the evening. Yeah. And we, we had our friend, the Reverend Nicky Bullets from Car Bomb Parade and his banjo. We had Serial Poets, myself and, and Brother Rob there. We were supposed to have Davey Hooligan, but he was under the weather. So he did not get to perform. 
but we also had uh, a special bonus appearance by our friends in Puzzle Panther, who were great, and um, which of course feature Eugene from Gogo Bordello, and uh, they're on the Stronger Together comp that the Women of the Pit just uh, just put out. And even our friend Stitch jumped up and played a song. So it, it tended, turns into this really fun night where it was very loose. I mean, Nicky played like amazing banjo. He he did a, he did, uh, a Gigi go. Allen. There we go. Oh, look yeah. at the crew there. Oh, look how cute they are. That's a, that's a great, that's a great shot. And, uh, that's, that's actually, that's a good shot. That's a nice batch of people right there. And uh, hey, hey, can I ask pretty... you, can I ask you something? Sure. Can I ask you something? You use the term under the weather. I'm confused by this. Is there above the weather or on the weather? Why is it under the weather? What is that? Right. Mean? No one's ever oh, no one's ever over the weather. I'm under the weather. Why I don't understand this term. Is it I you know, I want to be, hey, I'm on the weather or I'm above the weather? Why is it he was under right. the weather? That's a good question. You know, That's a good one. someone Google that. that. Yeah, yeah somebody, somebody Google, Google, Google it in the Bro, chat room. You, somebody Google right now. If you're going to come on the show, bro, you have to simplify your vernacular. You have to keep it, you know, <laughs> we're, we're, we're talking to a worldwide audience here. Davey was, <laughs> he was sick. Anyway, right. Davey, Davey, Davey he was, he was very show. upset, actually. He was very upset that he couldn't I know. He, he, you yeah. know what? I was really looking forward to, because I've never seen Davey uh, play guitar and sing before. He's a front man in Enziguri, of course. Um, I think one of my favorite parts of the day was was Nikki doing Gigi Allen bite it you scum on yeah. the banjo? <laughs> yeah, the people and, uh, in the restaurant that weren't part of our group really enjoyed that one, I think. Oh, I know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we, oh, it was, that great. was great. We had, a, we had a good sing along. We singing I Want yeah. Your Skull with everybody. It was so much fun. It uh, really was. Uh, and uh, and, well, and it, what's, what's uh, Gina, any. <laughs> And Gina, any echo off off uh, off the um, event that that you guys that we did? At, at um, I just that was all awesome. all positive things. Yeah, thank you, thank you both for being there. Um, just all positive things. I mean, you could see a little bit of how much fun we were having here. We uh, had that was our infamous "Hold My Leg" photo. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. But that's just like it symbol symbolizes us, right? We all help each other out and hold each other up and support each other. And that's yeah, like Kim came too. all the way down for that for that party. So Kim and Mario, how's the comp? How's the comp doing? Yeah, Lori? yeah look at that. The comp uh, is doing very very well. So we were, you know, we had a great pre-sale and the sales have been steady. So I'm um, excited about that. We've gotten some really great feedback, and it's really interesting because everybody who listens to it has like a different favorite, you know. Yeah. So it seemed yeah. like, you know, oh, I really like, you know, Puzzle Panther. I really like my op. I really like, you know, they, they pick out their favorite ones and I haven't heard like the same one. So there's something for everyone yeah. on this CD. Absolutely. Yeah, I think that's the strength of it, too, is that each band has their own unique sound. Right. It's not like 16 different bands that all sound the same. They all yeah. have their own unique voice. And um, and yeah, so it, it resonates with, you know, different people, each band, mm -hmm. you know. With their taste well, of music so well i love that cartel song big fan of the cartel yes, inevitably that's, that's what one. you hope for with things like this right you, you try to yes. have a bit of an eclectic mix and mix it up a little bit and uh you know different people come to the party you know so exactly. puzzle panther they um the song that they let us have for the comp is not even out yet they were in the studio in january and our deadline to get this music in was in december and they worked so hard um to get the song to us in time so we are super super grateful to them all and yeah. going back to Saturday, having Maafa play at our that event was, was just, I mean, to get the six of them in that tiny little space at yeah. Generation Records, I don't it. even know how we yeah. did it. And you know what? They, and they were great. They were great. I got to say, they were really great um, because nobody like, tur tur like I, I'm in the back of the room and it like the mix was really, really nice. It was like yeah. it wasn't like yeah, it was the perfect. guitar player. The guitar players, it's like all guitar. It was like it sounded really like well balanced, and, and they were very um, talent, musically talented band. They, they they were very good. They they, they were really good. Yeah. So that, that yeah. Was well, I love seeing Flora up there. Um, yeah. 
And I liked right. Flora's comment before how she said that, you know, compilations are like the purest form of musical discovery because sure. that's, that's, you know, I mean, this is like a mixtape of everything that we've been doing mm -hmm. here. So it's been really, sure. by, by well, the way, honored that you are part of it and honored yeah. to have you. Of course. Thank you. I'm, it was, I'm, it was great. But just, just so everyone knows, uh, <laughs> under the weather is a nautical term to go oh. under, the, under the deck to avoid seasickness. Like he's not feeling right. good. You go under, you, you go under the, under the deck. It's a nautical tor term on stormy seas. Thank you, Anthony Green. Wow, see that, Anthony? Who knew? You learn. You don't just right. come here to listen. You come here to learn. Listen, <laughs> before, <laughs> before you guys go, I'll tell you. I, you know what on the lamb is? Like yo, he's on the lamb. Like he's, you know that term. He's on like he's on the run. Yeah, like on the, on the run. Yeah, yeah. You know what you know what on the lamb is from? No, tell us. Back in the day, back in the day oh, um, like in the in the medieval times, when you were like running from the law, you, you couldn't come down or you wouldn't come to the town, uh, you didn't want to get caught, you know. So you were like on the outskirts. And when you're on the outskirts, about the only thing that you could catch to eat is like a lamb, you know, because all the <laughs> other animals could run away from you or whatever. <laughs> So yeah, he's on the run. He's on the lamb. You know that that's oh, what yeah. it's from. He's on the that's lamb. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. All, all right. right. Okay. There we go. <laughs> wow, all this education. I know. Yeah. What about on the wagon? Listen, last one. On the wagon. On is, the wagon. Off the now, wagon. On the, on the wagon is from when they were bringing you the gallows. In the end, they're taking you to go get hanged. They pull over and they allow you one drink. Right. Huh. This is your last drink. And when the bartender said, you know, do you want another? They say, no, he's on the wagon. That's it. <laughs> nice. No, that's what okay. it is. Okay. Oh, Danny's not going to the mattresses. That go one I the, know. The <laughs> <laughs> All right. That listen, I, I love you guys. I'll see you guys later. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Thank hey, you so Gina, much. Bye. Thank Gina, you. Are you coming to the show on Sunday? Uh, yeah, I'll be there. I'll see you Sunday. All right. See ya. <laughs> Lori, get home safe. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Listen, I'm on my way to the bunker after the show. I'm going to go on the goat. I'm bringing you, I'm bringing you about a dozen females for, for us to breed with after the apocalypse. Okay. Bring them in the bunker. I got water. <laughs> All right. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> All right. Later. That one might have got me into trouble. Yes, this is true. This is the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live, and we are sponsored by New York Hardcore Comics, The Organic Grill, The Texas Silver Rush, DTFM Vinyl Distro, Generation Records, Upstate Records, and 126 Hardcore Clothing. They're a streetwear brand for restless individuals who don't compromise. They're about being positive, spontaneous, and true to yourself, my friend, for years. They experimented with several printing methods and materials and collaborated with a large number of designers and illustrators always giving room for fresh perspectives while retaining the hardcore attitude. Get in touch with them. Ramp up your game at www.126clothing.com. Come on now, Joe Romini. It is the Texas Silver Rush. They're a jewelry design firm and boutique store located in the birthplace of the Texas country music scene in Fredericksburg, Texas. Goddamn electric. They specialize in work with musicians in all music genres to design and create unique one-off pieces, as well as the style them for stage album covers, promo photos, social media exposure. Their client list includes Rock Roll Hall of Famous Greg Rowley, Ringo Starr, and of course, Agnostic Front. Information and online sales are being taken at their Facebook and Instagram pages, and of course, www.thetexassilverrush.com. That said, let's clear the deck. Um, is that right? I'm telling you. You learn a lot watching this show. Good. Good. Speaking of Arizona, what's up, Danny? I hope you're well, buddy. Um, <laughs> I'm on the Lamb of God. Let's clear the deck. Let's bring our guests on. Let's hope everything is cool. Here we go. You're ready. I'm ready. We're ready. Let's go. It's the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live. Today's guests are guitarists and songwriters hailing from the Washington, D.C., Baltimore, Maryland region. They are known for their work with the highly influential and much beloved punk psychedelic garage rock band, The Slicky Boys. Please welcome, coming at us from Frederick, Maryland, 
Marshall Keith, and Kim Kane. Hey, man. How are you doing? Hey. All right. All right. This is going to be interesting. Yeah, yeah. You guys are crunching. You guys are crunching already. But let's uh -oh. let's 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 let's, uh, let's give it a shot. Uh, thanks for coming, and I'm I'm excited to have you guys. Well, thank you. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're, I'll, I'll try. I'll tr I'll try to divvy out the questions so so we're not talking on top of each other. You know. Um, that sounds good. Yeah. L let's start with this, Marshall. Um, how did you come up? Did you grow up in a musical household? How did music come into your life? Uh, back in the 60s, when I was a kid, uh, you know, Beatles came along, Bob Dylan, Rolling Stones, all that kind of stuff. But my, uh, my older brother was a big Beatles fanatic. And so he learned all the songs. And, you know, he would strum along on guitar and, you know, sing with it. And so eventually I learned how to play guitar and uh, started singing harmonies with him. Is that right? Yeah. So, 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 it was an, so it was an older brother thing. Yeah. And uh, had an older sister who, uh, she had a boyfriend who was in an actual band. And that was pretty cool. They do James Brown songs. <laughs> What what was the uh, and uh, Marshall? What, what was like the? First, do you remember what the first uh, live music you saw was? Um, you know, in my elementary school, we had a band come and they just played what was popular in those days, Beatles and stuff, and the whole everybody just went crazy. They were like, "Oh my God, this is the most fantastic thing anybody had ever seen," and that was when I was like. 12 probably there you go uh, hey kim how about you did yeah. you grow up in a musical household how did music come into your life uh, i was always a fanatic for music from when i was a kid listening to my little tiny japanese sony um transistor listening to the bbc in burma of all things uh i'd stand out in the lawn and try to get a signal am i on there yeah you're, you're good. okay um it uh <laughs> i'm sorry hey combing my beard their service um but i had a younger this is opposite of marshall i had a younger brother who's an amazing guitarist was playing all along even in a garage band in the mid 60s in in korea of all things that's what the whole sleep right i just i thought the music fanatic i loved it and i used to go to games with my Yeah. Can you bring me those headphones? This is going to be an interesting one today, folks. So we're going to have, we're going to, we're going to, it, it's going to be a process. Can you hear me? Yeah. The volume is fucked. Yeah. Give it a second. We'll sort it out. Can Let you me hear see. me now? I, yeah, I can hear. Can you hear me? I've got, I've got you, but I don't hear Kim anymore. Oh, that's weird. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to knock him off. Go, go sign him back on again. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Listen, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it, right? So, yeah, there's nothing like a live show. I don't stream it anymore at all, you know, but uh, they'll sort it out. We'll sort it out and uh, we'll get up to speed, you know. But listen, it's not, it, it's going to, it's. I'm bad. I'm hey, bad. man. Can you hear me? Hey, now? there he is. Yeah. I'm sorry. I've already got my stories out real quick. hundred miles an hour. Well, well um, you know what, though? You sound, you sound great now. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it is. I, it does sound better. Oh, anyway, I was saying was in Korea of all things. We, we did our little high school bands, but I wasn't even into soul, I'll be honest. I was um, in the garage and stuff and, you know, psychedelic stuff. And we heard that James Brown was coming to our gym, which was on a military base in Korea. 
in like 1968. And like, what? Now, 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 I missed that part. Were you living in Korea? Yes, yes. I was going to high school in Korea, believe it or not. And, the, and, and not being into Seoul, but what was the name of our high school? Seoul American High School. But SEO, you know, the capital of Korea, not, not SEO. But I right. went because I hadn't seen a, a big American band. I lived overseas most of my life. So we went and it was stunning. I mean, here I'm sitting on the gym floor, like staring up at the stage and, it, you know, I never seen the James Brown show, and it's like, oh my God, you know, my eyeballs are like. How, this old, how old were you? How old were you? I was seventeen at that point. Wow. But like I was saying before, I lived over, you know, lived overseas so much. I didn't see any of this stuff. It's all, it's all good to me, new to me. So I just right. picked up my my younger brother's guitar and noodling and noodling and noodling, and I was terrible. You know, come on, <laughs> mm -hmm. DIY to the to nth degree, really. Sure, sure. And and. But, uh, so did, did that did that inspire you to pick up guitar right then and there? No, I just um, we had records like the uh, Music Machine and Hendrix and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. actually, I tried to pick up the drum. I tried to I formed a I tried to form a band there. I wanted to be the drummer. I'd never mm -hmm. drummed. I didn't have a drum set. I got all these people in my house, and we suddenly we all realized this is the stupidest thing I've ever. Done. I don't. I can't. I wasn't a musician, so that that didn't last long. <laughs> I drew a cover. But that just petered out. <laughs> then right. eventually, you know, my brother's guitars are hanging around. And when he wasn't looking, I'd sneak and pick them up. He's a real good guitarist. But anyway. it's, it's interesting that both you guys, and I'll bring, Mar I'll bring Marshall back on in a minute. But I feel sure. like we, we, we have a good connection here. So uh, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to run with this for a second. Sure. Um, it's interesting that both of you guys, it really, it, it's, sort of, it, it's sort of filtered down from, from older family members. Or younger, yeah. Yeah, My, mine was younger. It went up. Oh, yours was younger. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oddly enough. Um, but uh, yeah, I guess that's probably we're, natural. We're, we're the, we're the, yeah, yeah, for sure. Did the Beatles uh, were the Beatles a, a big influence when they had when they came into your orbit? Yeah, it's the same thing. The very first forty-five, I walked about five miles to one local record store to buy "She Loves You," and right. I still have the flyer from the store. Wow. Um, yeah, it's it's like a. Uh, local radio stations top 10 and then them, them posing because they played in dc first so we had their picture of them standing with the dj but that's okay but i i didn't try to play the beatles like marshall i right. i figured that was ridiculous well i couldn't i couldn't even comp i couldn't i couldn't figure out two chords i, I couldn't even when i formed the slinky boys i couldn't figure out most chords as marshall knows so sure. but but of course we love the music yeah but i did like garage stuff because our local bands were playing you know typically we're you know classic garage at what point did you end up and why did you end up in D.C.? Oh, um, that's what we're living overseas all the time. My father was in the State Department. So, right. when, you know, naturally you'd come back there and we just ended up being there. Good, so good old, good old D.C., right? Oh, and every, everybody, <laughs> everybody's someone. It's like, what are you doing here? Which one of your family members is working for the government? Or yeah. the military. Yep. Yeah. Or the military. <laughs> You right. Know, you know, yeah, but you know, hey, thank goodness. Look, look at all the people I wouldn't have met and all the great bands I wouldn't have seen. <laughs> no, DC is a very, very unique place. Now, I'm going to be so bold as to bring Marshall on. Sure. And uh, uh, hey, Tom Lyle, I see you, man. I'll get to you. Hey, Marshall. Hey, can you hear me oh, okay? Wow. Oh, my God, I can. Oh, all yeah. Right, we, all right. I Go went ahead. around and turned off a whole bunch of phones and Roku boxes and all Good. that stuff. So, so, uh, Marshall, uh, you, you grew up in the DC area. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, it was just kind of weird because by the time I was, you know, started playing in a band or whatever, um, like when I was like 12, 13 years old, my older brother, it'd be like 10 o'clock at night. He'd say, let's hitchhike to DC. And I was like, okay. You know, like wild adventure thing. And uh, so, you know, I would just go along with them and, and just Georgetown was where all the hippies hang it, hung out and stuff. Sure. And uh, so I remember like around here, we have Little Tavern, which is like a White Castle hamburger mm -hmm. place. Mm -hmm. I remember like, you know, hanging out at the White, at the Little Tavern at like, you know, 3 a.m. or some bunch of drunks all around. And I'm like 13 years old. But uh, I also uh, moved to D.C. for a while. Uh, this was when last couple of years of high school. And uh, 
So that was just awesome because all my friends from Maryland would come over to my house and, uh, you know, we all hitchhike or drive down to D.C. And, you know, a lot of times it was just driving around. But uh, but, yeah, there'd be occasional things where you could get into a club that, you know, was like a hippie club. So there was no booze. Um, Also, another thing was this thing called Fort Reno. Mm-hmm. And it's this big park uh, next to a school, and they just had sort of a concert in the park thing, except it's like rock bands in the park. So got to see a whole lot of uh, sure, a whole lot of bands, you know, in my you know seventeen, eighteen, nineteen years old. Were, were you? Were, uh, and I'm not trying to date you, but uh, when you say something like that, I sort of think of sort of like. Uh, you know, uh, a lot of what I, and my, I, what I vision is sort of like the Allman Brothers band and, and uh, sort, sort of like that uh, mid to late 60s when a lot of those bands played public parks and stuff like that. Okay. Am, am I on the you mark? might have to log them on. The them on, on. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And uh, there was also, there was some sort of like progressive type stuff, like a little bit of, uh, uh, you know, rock jazz they used to call it fusion, that kind right. of stuff. Um, Nils Lofgren, <clears throat> who's in uh, Bruce Springsteen's band. Well, what uh, he was it wasn't he in, was he in uh, uh, he was Grin was Grin. the name of him. Yeah, That's right. I was right. And, I was right there with it. I, I was thinking, was that the name of the album? Or was that the band Grin? Uh, yeah. yeah, that was the name of the the band and the album. I think, but <clears throat> right. I'm one of the few people who didn't actually see them, but a band like them, there were just, you know, a lot of stuff like that. Yeah. It looks like, it looks like I lost Kim again. I don't hear him. Yeah. He's, I think they're going to uh, sign him out and sign him back in. Okay. I'll throw him yeah. out. Boom. Just like that. <laughs> that said, um, and any, anything, what else did you see in those sort of halcyon sixties uh, days? Any of uh, uh live that really inspired you or, or, or was really amazing? You know, they're just, uh, you know, f- when I got into my, like, uh, you know, late teens and stuff, there's uh, this guy, Danny Gatton, this guitar oh, sure. player. Yeah. And I saw him like four or five times yeah. and I'd be, I'd go home and I'd be like, now on the Ray, one hand, Ray, feel- Ray Hogan would know this. Danny Gatton was Danny Gatton playing a Telecaster, was right? Tele- right. Yep. Yep. But uh, you know, I'd go home after seeing him, and on the one hand, I'd like, I'm never going to be as good as him. I should just quit playing right now. And then on the other hand, I said, I need to practice, man. I need to practice. Well, you you know, Kim, uh, same yeah. same question for Marshall. Like, yeah. did you did you see anybody live? back then that, that really inspired you? Uh, and I'm not necessarily talking about as a musician, but just maybe spiritually or emotionally. Yeah. Um, I, I got to go along with Marshall's thing. I was a fanatic Grin fan. He went to my, uh, Nils went, was actually a neighbor. And when I went, right? to high, went to high school, the same high school, wow. Walter Johnson. So I saw him every opportunity I could, including when he's talking about a Fort Reno. I even have pictures from that one. Oh, and crap. I was watching him because I was inspired by him. Oh, here we go again. Oh, can you no, hear me? Good. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. Um, and then I've got to, luckily, thank goodness, I got to see the last Hendrix show here in Baltimore. And of wow. course, naturally, you know, but the, the, the more like, But yeah, that, that stuff really inspired me. I was a big fanboy. That's why I also the punk era and the hardcore era. Right. You don't see me getting everything autographed. Because I, I like, I love this. Listen, you know what? I'm going to take this opportunity to bring this guy on. <laughs> What's up, Tom? Here's my, here's my uh, Slicky Boys uh, flyer from, uh, they were at the Wilson Center. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't only punk rock there at the Wilson Center. 
And there wasn't always just hippie bands at Fort Reno, too. You know, Fugazi played at Fort Reno. He was around for a long time. I don't know if they're still playing shows there, but that that Is place it, was, I, was it was it like was it a social hall or was it a like no, a, 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 a regular a park? It was a park. Right. It was next yeah. to like a um, some kind of um, DC like a power plant that looked like a disguised as a church or something like that. <laughs> you know, back in the day, they would be able to afford to make a facade. Instead of just making sure. a square block building, you know. Sure. And now, they, let, me, let me bring these guys back on. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now we can. Uh, hey, th that that said, Marshall, let me ask you. So tell us uh, how how did the Slicky Boys come together? How how did uh, what, what's the origin of that? Uh, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, Kim and me. Uh, my girlfriend knew Kim. She was friends with him and. Uh, I knew about his art and stuff and record collecting. <laughs> oh, there goes. Uh, I guess I better. Should I continue the story? You got yeah, it. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm speaking of records. I'm go looking ahead. at looking behind Tom there. Um, go ahead. Yeah. And she introduced me to him, saying, "You got to meet this my boyfriend. He's so weird. He's got this place weird guitar. He has all room all set up." And and we met, and and it was amazing. Marshall just was amazing. I mean, right from the bat, you, you don't. It's hard to tell from Slicky Boy Records because he was doing different stuff before, but his most amazing thing was he to make a real good echo loop. And this is true, I have a picture. He ran, you know, like the old echo plexus had a real long tape, but he would run the tape around his room. And part of it went around a, um, a handle on the window and all the way around so he could get incredible echoes and delay. And and I put out his, I put, we, we stuck tapes out of his room one day, his girlfriend and I for Christmas present. I stole them without knowing it, and we took. I took it down when they still made acetates. Remember those? <laughs> yeah. And we yeah. made a couple acetates to give him as a Christmas present, and we put two of his songs on an acetate, and that's what whole started everything. Slicky, making records. I thought, well, I can do draw. I can do covers for records. What a fun wow. blast! I don't care. I could play those and respond. You know. Well, Did you just lose Kim? Yeah, it seems like when I bring you on, I lose him. How about hey. me? You hear me though. Right? I, I yeah. hear you. Yeah. Tom, Tom, I hear you. Yeah, yeah. We're we're just gonna probably have to be uh, signing on and off, and yep. uh, um, or but yeah, or, or yeah, or one guy at a time, you know. Um, yeah. So, but go go ahead, go ahead, Marshall. Yeah. So, I mean, that was awesome when he he made that record. You know, I was like, I didn't know that people could make records, man. That's just crazy. And plus, the artwork was cool that he. Uh, you know put on the on the record it was really cool so um but so yeah when he finally came up with the idea of just making an actual record and he just had this whole concept you know he he would he had heard about punk music and he said or you know that's the direction we're gonna go in is uh like <laughs> yeah yeah yep can't hear me yep i'm back i you know what? I get it. It, it. it seems like it's a one or the other guy thing. It's either one or the other. That is so weird. Yeah, it is. You know what? You know what it is, Tom? They're both in the same. They're both in the same house. Yeah, there we go. Is that right? Hey. Uh, yeah, they're, they're in the same house. They're like yeah. one room, one room apart from each other. Same wife. Can you hear you? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Hey, I, I got an idea. Why don't you got? Guys, why don't, you, the same room. Sit why don't you guys sit next to each other? Why don't you sign off and, and go in the same room? Yeah, and we sit may next have to. to each other. Do that. Right. Go try Ashton that. We'll just okay. Yeah. There you go. That's the only way it's going to work, right? Listen. Yeah, Isn't there you go. It's <laughs> entertaining people. How's your audience? Is it, it's like, are there anybody left on watching anymore? Yeah, yeah my, my, my audience will hang in there for a while. Okay. Be of course. Before before it gets really They're ugly, you know. Yeah, they'll, they'll let 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 them let them fight it out. But you know, I'm I'm trying to get things up to speed with these guys so we can, you know, so I could, you know, uh, you know, kind of talk to them about, uh, you know, how how they came across my radar screen, which is through you guys. I you know? I, I I and and I have a history with them too. Yeah. I want to Cordy, but I want them to be here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we'll 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 let, we'll let them. We'll let them uh, suss it out. 
suss it out a little bit. Are but, they coming uh, back? Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're gonna both. They're both gonna come on on one on one screen. I hope. So, I hope. So in that, what's going on in the record room, man? Oh, music always twenty four seven, man. I you saw. Know? I I saw you found a couple of boxes of like uh, uh, old flyer. Three boxes. Is that right? Um. Yeah. Three boxes of. 40 year old 35 to 40 year old flyers and fanzines and posters too wow um right uh uh just of all all bands minor threat nice teen idols um uh, you go to my uh instagram page and i'm posting them tom uh at tom lyle 807 807 tom lyle 807 and you could see um just like you know did, did you did you know you had this stuff was it or literally like it's rediscovery um, i thought i had lost them all i thought because we had you know there's been a couple of floods uh storms on the east coast uh-huh the last uh -huh. 10 years right sure sure i don't know you know if you um had any of the, any fun with those well, well, I, I actually, actually, I live in a, I live in Manhattan in a pre-war building, and there could be a nuclear holocaust outside, and and you just would have no idea. Yeah, but, our yeah. House, our <laughs> house was built in 1900, but the right. groundwater table is like up to here, so our basement flooded with like three feet of water. So I right. thought I lost them all. Crazy. But there Crazy. they. I'm gonna try to bring these guys back on. Man, oh man. Can you hey. Can you yeah. guys hear me? Can, yeah, we can. Can yeah. you hear us? Yes. Yes. All right. We're we're gonna do it in one room here. The, yeah. We're the two-headed dog. And, and yeah. We'll just switch the microphone. Yeah. I actually, can can you hear me through Kim's yeah. microphone? Now? Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. It, it, it's all good. So, Sorry, guys. So, so Marshall, Kim, tell us how Slicky Boys came about. How how, how was the band put together? And first of all, it? they look like girlfriends on the subway. <laughs> <laughs> Staring oh yeah oh, oh i never <laughs> what's a subway yeah <laughs> no um so how did it come together yeah um i guess while marshall's figuring out his pad there um we just how do we how do what how do we finally agree to just get together and do something you know and just well you oh i know we want to do we wanted to do a record yeah yeah after after marshall's and we just said that, well if it's that easy Let's do a record. And I'm a record fanatic collector, like I can see behind Tom with all the records back there. Wow. Um, and so we needed a band. I realized, wait, wait, I've got a guitarist, but wh how, where do I get a band? I was, I'm kind of like an antisocial hiding in the corner all the time. So, and Marshall, same thing, hiding in his room. So what do we, so my brother, my young, again, that younger brother we talked about in the same high school, you know, he knew about a band um, called Lone, Lone Oak, which was the name of the street to live on. So they were about, to, I found out they were just breaking up. So I had the chutzpah of asking him to ask them if they would do a record for me. You know, we just, just record and that'll be it. You know, I just need a band because they had a singer and a drummer and a bass player. And right. I went and saw them and I taped their, like their last show and I got all that. And it was a girl singer named Martha Hall. And they right. kind of agreed, but they kind of looked at me weird. Like, oh, I don't know. No one's ever asked us to be like, <laughs> come do a band. Anyway, um, and then when they found out what kind of music it was, it was like another kind of a problem because they, they were more like rootsy. They weren't punky or any of the slightest. But Martha had this really good voice, which no, really didn't know. She's a sh sort of small girl, but she has like a the Joplin kind of <clears throat> low wow. register, real gutsy, which was fine for garage and punk. Perfect. So they were so nice to agree to this. Then we all got together in different people's places to try to practice and agree on the songs <laughs> and uh, that was fine. And then we went from there, right, Marshall? Yep. 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 Uh, now, now here is this, this is a, a, a shot you, uh, that was sent to me. I know it's not a great shot, but this is the original band. Yep. That's yep. Or uh, uh, I have a question. So that's before Mark Noon joined? Oh, yes. Yeah. We, we didn't yeah, last that, that, we didn't last yeah, that long Martha in this Hall. version. Yeah. That's Martha Hull singing, right? Yeah, the little one down, the little girl down by the drums. <laughs> no, she's not right. a drummer. The one with right. the fro, that one? Uh, sorry, say yeah. that again? Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's like the early one of the earliest little pictures. I think a little Polaroid. Hey, we hey, took. hey, take take a look at this. I found this footage from you guys. It's not great footage. It's pretty gnarly, but it's from nine. It's it's from nineteen seventy seven. I guess it's the earliest <laughs> earliest footage of you guys. Oh yeah. What a racket! What a racket yeah. in 1970. That, that was the beer bash, and yeah, that was um, you know, more punky. Like we actually probably sounded live. You know, problem is like the guy Stephen and everything. I can see why he misses. You know, if you listen to certain records, they're not quite you know. But our live show was more, and that was called "Put a Bullet Through a Jukebox" because we hated the records that were coming out that day. It was you know, like the, the anti-disco kind of thing. So, <laughs> yeah, you, you know, in, in doing in doing my homework, uh, I came across this quote. Um, I guess this was uh, so. This is a quote. the band was without precedent in the area. The band was without precedent in the area and flew in the face of processed drum beats and boring disco crap that was dominating the areas, uh, the airwaves in the seventies. So I guess you you guys were really flying against the whole disco thing, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's what we wanted to do. We wanted to bring back the '60s kind of garage stuff that we liked, and we had that punch and cool. And then, you know, I love the obviously the English punk stuff. I mean, I went there in '77 and '78 because I just loved everything that came out. So if we could right. kind of push it all together, what, there we go. What bands did you see? Oh me? Yeah. Oh man. We'd get, go there like two weeks. So the very first week, we'd go every single night till I collapsed by the seventh or eighth day. I'd go out to a club every single night, and even if it meant driving somewhere in the left lane of the road. But everything from like X Ray Specs and the Skunks and Eater and uh, the Buzzcocks and uh, you know, uh, everybody. What? Oh. Hey, you might, you might, hey, hey you might want to switch uh, the earbuds because the mic is right under his beard oh. and that. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Switch, okay, here, switch I'll, them I'll around. Take it off for now. Here, okay. No, 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 no. Switch them. Switch them. Oh, just switch them. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I think that might solve that problem. Wait. <laughs> no, you, uh, use your other ear. Right. Wait, no, this this yeah. is the mic here. Oh, it's the mic. Yeah. Okay. Tom, okay, Tom, were you giving it the finger because of the mic or because, it's, it's, or because of the because band? Of the either. bands you saw because of the you saw X-ray specs live. And, oh, that was. I mean, get this very first non local punk band, and it was the Skunks opening. And it was X Ray Spec. Very first night I got there, I looked up, I'm looking at you know, the paper. Oh my god, and of course, anyway, it was at the marquee, it was at the marquee, too. Pardon, where did you see him? Marquee, the marquee. Oh god, and it was just, I taped it, and it was just they were like, I hadn't seen an English punk band, and it was so great. And here's the cool thing I taped it, but after we got out, right. There's punks going down either side of the street, and they're singing punk songs. I got yeah. it on tape too. They're just like both sides are singing back Where, and forth to each other. Sex tape? How come no, no one you haven't shared it with anybody? Oh yeah, I, I've mentioned on certain interviews, but no, you, you gotta talk, you gotta put it on. Talk, yeah, talk, yeah. Talk. But all those things were just. I mean, I was at by, again accident uh, live at the Vortex. You remember that obscure album? There's a punk one. And it just happened to be there that night. I've got the poster. I stole it off the front of the uh, of the club, and I taped that while they were taping it. It was like, you know, Rudy and the uh, uh, raped, terrible name for a band, and all this stuff. And just that's the thing about England. And it's just again, people don't realize in America, you you buy you get the first day you buy Melody Maker NME right, and you open it, and the, you know it's a big paper, and tiny print as far as you can see bands and you have to pick between like in london you have to pick between like 25 bands a night which one are you going to go see oh uh, no i'll see the bus no no i think i'll go see x no i'll see um i can't remember all of them but i taped everything though. why people that's why uh, uh, uh australian bands would move to back to england yeah if they wanted to make it because of sure. the industry there yeah and right I, hate to, I hate to jump on what you're saying but like 
my girlfriend is a fan, even almost more of a fanatic music groupie than me, but she used to go to England even before me and more. No, she used to hang out at the Marquee and hang out later on with who? ACDC. You know, the, the, their very first, when they were there, she said this is laughing, they're all little funny little short kids and everything. Same thing, like that thing about moving to London. Oh, my God. Yeah, they were seen, Australia. They were a pub band. They were. Hey, uh, are you guys... Are you guys able to use? Uh, do you guys have to use those those earbuds? Is, oh, is there, let, is, let's try. Oh. Let's try it with none. Ears. Can you hear me? Yes. No. Oh, okay. Can you hear us? Yes. Yeah. Oh, great. Okay. Oh, hey. 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 Jesus Moses. Okay, yes, I'm, I'm sorry to keep going off on your to uh, subjects here for you. I hope it's not too bad. No, it's, 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 it, it, no, no. That's what that's what we do here. It's fine, and, and we're 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 fine tuning. We're fine tuning the hot rods. So, so you guys, you guys get going. Uh, you guys get rolling. Before we get there, Tom, uh, just from 1980, um, I got, I got a bit of ephemera. I could. Uh, you guys are kind of getting up to speed in that area. Yeah. Hold on, it's it's taking a minute to uh, to bite. But uh, so when you guys started in the in, in the uh, in the DC um, Baltimore. More air. What were the venues? What kind of places would you would, would you play, Marshall? Yeah, uh, there was hardly any place for us to play when we first started. Um, There's this little bar that had mainly like heavy metal bands, hair bands, and uh, and they had some, I guess, a little metal stuff. But it was called the Keg. <laughs> and, uh, I went to the keg. <laughs> yeah, right. and it was near a strip joint too. It was like you know, like a couple. It was of a nice neighborhood. It was a nice. <laughs> it was a nice neighborhood actually, but uh, yeah, it was a good place because uh, you know when we first started out, we, you know, we as a band, we were just learning how to be a band. You know, it was, and we just try to play anything and everything. You know, uh, you know the song. Dirty, dirty water, darn, 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 you know, just anything. Yeah. Um, I see. And the songs see. that we wrote, like our originals, uh, it, it was just, you know, you, you'd have like one kind of a groove going, and then you say, okay, I'll put a whole different thing in here, you know, just mismatched stuff that didn't really work, you know, with my brain today but you know some people like the, the weirdness where it was just you know it kind of when we put records out it kind of sound crappy but why watch with this self-deprecation stuff you guys yeah were, right. <laughs> you guys were well awesome. yeah i mean because if you heard our first album you'd understand that <laughs> i on your, i've heard your first um, album. it's awesome yeah, what are you guys talking about Hey, so let me let me let me ask you. So you no idea what they're talking about. The, 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 you guys are getting up to speed, and, and I see some of these flyers, like the Ontario Theater. That that's in D.C. Yeah. And uh, so uh, uh, any sort of this is 1980, which is when things are just really kick off. Uh, any recollection of these show uh, these kind of shows? Oh, there they go. They're off again. Oh, I remember them. They, yeah. uh, I um I wanted to bring up I wanted to talk to them about this. I booked them in 1979, 80. Oh wow. I put I started putting on shows and I I booked them. Wow. And that's because because when I went because I lived in New York, remember. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. We are you are we back? Okay, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, so you, you guys, uh, hey, hey, go ahead, Tom. Mention that again, will you? Yeah. Oh no. I don't hear Tom now. No. <laughs> <laughs> don't hear you, Tom. I don't hear you. Can you put him on the screen by himself? No, he's out. He gets. He, he'll have. He'll have to. He'll oh, have okay. to bounce back. Okay. Uh, he, here's a here's a flyer from 1980. Uh, uh, things things are getting up to speed. Any recollection of this kind of stuff? Uh, yeah, um, but there, this wasn't this the concert that didn't happen and got postponed and all that kind of stuff. <sighs> I can't Do we have the other one back here? Where's the? Um, 
Let me see. I got. I have that one. I have. I have. Oops. We have this one here. Yeah, What's I that? think that that one you had got canceled. And then What's that? Oh said, wow! Look at that. Basically, basically the same thing, but I think the first one got canceled or something. Yeah, I can't quite remember. But this one, this one happened. I mean, talk talk about bills they used to put together, huh? And then uh, Violet. Times out at the cramp show that Henry and Ian always talk about is blowing their minds. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the most famous yeah. one. I, he's probably referring to the uh, Hall of Nations at the university, Georgetown University. Is that the one he's referring to? Probably. Well, actually, most cramp shows. Yeah. yeah. Well, the most that was the most famous one because what, I mean, what about that little club? Yeah, where, the uh, LBJ club. The uh, LBJ club. I like yeah. that. It, it, it we had the crafts played it twice, and that was. Yeah, the penetrators were one of the opening band. It was great stuff, but that got destroyed. And there was a little, it's a little tiny oh, old timey club, but there was a little iron railing in front of the cramps. It was all floor ah. level. And people kept bashing and bashing, doing the bashing thing. And they knocked it and they knocked into Ivy. And um, they knocked into her. And um, Nick Knox got so pissed, he leaped over his drum cat and jumped into the crowd and grabbed somebody who was threatening to kill him. If they didn't stop bothering her. And then and then when we were all in the crowd too later, it had a very low, uh, what do you call it? Uh, not fiberglass, but you know, ceiling. And I was standing beside, you know Tex Rabinowitz of the Bad Boys? Not, oh, uh, I, I know the band. Our main rockabilly guy. And he's yeah, like yeah. six foot eight. And I'm, you know, and he uh -huh. just he got so drunk and excited, he reached up with his fingers like claws, embedded them in the ceiling, and pulled it down on us. <laughs> and wires were hell oh, because he was pulling the wiring for it. It wouldn't go any further. So he just, I have a piece of that still. It's this side piece cramps. of the ceiling. Yeah, piece of the ceiling. And he pulled it down on us, and everybody just kept going. It was fine and everything. But of course, the club didn't have any shows after that. What a souvenir. Yeah, the cramps let, let would me, always get everybody riled up. It was great. Let me ask you about this one here. Uh, sure. Uh, this, this what is that? The, the, the cellar door? Is that, oh, is, sure. that, is that DC or is that, is that DC? Yeah. That, yeah, they and they eventually made a uh, booking company or whatever. Yeah, yeah. This this was actually it's like when we played New York one time at Gertie's Spoke City. This was like the Gertie's or uh, this, this is this just is, in, the, the in reference to, in reference to what you said. This is where cellar door management came out of. Yeah, right. Yeah. No yeah. shit. I did not yeah. know that. It, 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 near the end, they started letting more weird, you know, weird well, us yep. bands and stuff, but it was strictly. You know, folky mugwumps, you know, all that kind of I mean it was yeah, it was yeah, mugwumps. It was the <laughs> hip little, you know, the 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 seller, you know. <laughs> and yeah. uh isn't that like where they wrote Rocky Mountain High? Yeah, like, right. Uh, that was that well, was no, no, Pat Baldwin. Pat Baldwin says Miles Davis recorded live cellar door. Yeah, cool. Wow, yeah, lots of stuff. They, they someone finally put a booklet that I got that showed that listed everybody they could ever find that played there, and it's 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 weird. But, I mean, uh, <laughs> yeah, by this time, at a certain point, we had sort of finally made it into clubs just from opening for other bands for, you know, a couple of years. And then finally, we could get a headlining spot, you know, around some places. It's sort of like the new wave punk thing had sort of gotten into the general population. So people knew what it was more. And, uh, you know, there was up and coming hardcore bands and stuff. If it was a cool club, a lot of times we get one of those hardcore bands to open for us. So that's that's yeah, how we really got exposed. Here's to another yeah. one. What's this? Desperados. Same kind of club. Yeah, it was like across the street from the cellar door. Yeah, it was all this old Georgetown was the hip area. Yeah, you know, it was, yeah, we played there a lot, a lot of different bands. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah, and, and and you know, you know what I noticed about this too? If you look at the flyer, it says and 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 streets in Boston on December eighteenth, which. <laughs> You know, uh, I remember streets in Boston. I, wow, I, I was up there. Yeah, oh. for sure. Hey, Tom, are you can you hear us? <laughs> yeah, I'm here. Okay, cool. good, good. You want want to mention uh, about booking these guys in '79? Can you tell us that story? Yeah, hmm. but that was after after um, after Mark was in the band. Hmm. I booked that. I, I put them on at the at American University. Uh, they had a little auditorium there that they would rent out to anybody who put a deposit down. You don't remember that show, uh, do you, Kim? The, uh, that, is that when uh, they uh, like kicked John Stab out of the place? 
Oh, he got thrown out of just about every other place. <laughs> they, they wanted him to tell people to stop slam dancing. And he was like, right. I'm not going to You announce this from the microphone. I'm not going to. I'm not going to tell people to stop slam dancing. It's that's no, not that's, my job. I don't do no, that. We played. We played Lisner too. They tried. They threw us out of Lisner after we played our set. They 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 got a bunch of uh, janitors or whatever helped move all our equipment. On. Oh, well, we're back. Okay. Yeah. Oh no. Go on. Oh, okay. No, we can't hear Tom. Oh. Sorry. I want to hear the story, too. Yeah. I don't hear you, Tom. Fuck. Yeah. It must be must be a bad, like, internet all over the East Coast right now or something. <laughs> it's, yeah. Sorry. It's, Darn. Uh, I, I don't know what set, I don't know what sets I don't know what sets it off, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But uh, I, I do remember a lot of the a lot of the hardcore or punky shows and hardcore shows, but not you know we did so many it's hard to remember everything. <laughs> well, I'm, sure, I'm 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 sort of working my working my way up. Could could you work my way towards it? Uh, Sorry. Hey Brooke, what's up, Brooke? I know I I just kicked Tom off. He'll sign back on. Um, <laughs> where did the name come from? Oh, yeah, that's that story. Um, that's for me from living in Korea. The street punks, the guys that sold black market stuff, stole things, lived on their own on the street. A lot of orphan mm -hmm. kind of people, but from the Korean War. It's from the Korean right. War. And the, the thugs and the, you know, just general street kids were called Slicky Boys. Uh, oh, yeah, and, and that's literally, I got it because, you know, that's where Can I saw a lot, of, saw a lot yeah. of music. I, I even saw a Korean, a Korean rock band when I, in our high school. I mean, how many people have seen it? <laughs> so, yeah. You, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to, I'm sort of going to jump, jump forward a little bit here and sure. just talk a little bit about, you know, how you guys came on my radar screen, which was from, talking and interviewing to guys um, and Brian Baker and all kinds of DC guys. When I say to them, what were the first shows that you saw? Who were the bands that influenced you? S the Slicky Boys would always come up. And, and so I was like, you know, and then I, I looked, I looked at, um, I, I forgot what was it? What, what was the book? A uh, band in DC, maybe mm -hmm. uh, yeah. some of the real early photos uh, or like you guys at a place called Madam's Organ. And, oh, yeah. you, you know, and, and, and I start seeing that like, you know. Slick Boys were the one of the first bands I saw in D.C. It was either them or Pentagram. Oh, or, oh yeah, Pentagram. But but um, I, when I came down, I was 17 and I came down to D.C. And the drinking age was still 18, which meant there was no drinking age, you know. It was just. <laughs> You know, so they let you into the club as long as you had their five dollars at the door. They let you in, and I saw the Sleeky Boys, and I saw Pentagram, and I saw the Muffins. Remember them? Mm -hmm. And uh, all sorts of. In New York, it was all cover bands. Yeah. Hmm. But I came down to D.C. and it was all original music. I was freaking out. Oh, I was going cool. three to five nights a week. The hmm. bands, nine thirty well, well, club. Atlantis, I guess. Atlantis, was, right? Was first, yeah. it was first Atlantis Club, and yeah. uh, DC Space, and mm -hmm. all uh, the Keg, of course, yeah. and all sorts of places and house parties. Even it was crazy. And then yeah. I booked, I booked the Slicky Boys. That must have been in '79, maybe. When did Martha leave? Uh, uh, I think end of '78. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it was probably '79 when I when I booked them at. Uh, that the new lecture hall it was called. Oh yeah, that's that's right. That name yeah. sounds familiar now. Yeah, yeah. you see it on yeah. the you're on um, Nebraska or whatever driving down. You see the sign because it's on the street. You know. What What do you remember about the gig? Um, that someone threw up in the bathroom. And <laughs> we didn't, and I said, "Wow, that's a real rock show." <laughs> yeah. Or pukes in the bathroom. I'm like, all right. <laughs> I, I, my my perception was my perception of it was that you guys really inspired a lot of the younger guys, a lot of the younger hardcore guys coming up because nice. you, you you know three chords, no waiting. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. But also that you guys were sort of had this DIY kind of work at you guys were out there like sort of like uh, as we say on the show ham and egger ham and eggs are like a rocky 
uh, and Skip Graw. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah right. So, so, guy, yeah. so uh, Marshall, could you give us any perspective on just sort of like the band's early sort of DIY ethic? Yeah, well, um, yeah, when Mark joined the band and then we had Dan Polensky on drums, and that was sort of the, the real core where we really started getting a lot of stuff done. But Mark started writing songs and he had like a real sort of central thing he, he did where it was kind of in the middle of all the, like Kim and me would, one of us would write a real sappy ballad and then a real punk thing. And we were kind of all over the place, but Mark sort of had an in-between thing that was, you know, What you what you digging in there for? Blicky Boys Records. Okay, <laughs> these guys just these guys just fell off again. So they are technically challenged, I think. Right? Interesting show. I haven't had one of these in a while. No, usually it's okay, right? But oh, we, it's been uh, okay. I don't know. I can't. I'm looking in the punk section, so I thought they were there, right? Is it everything alphabetized? Well, uh, best I can. Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna take uh, you know what I'm gonna take this opportunity and do a sponsor break. I'll see you in a couple yeah, minutes, okay? Go. Perfect. All right, here we go. Let's take a sponsor break. Let's hope for the best. We'll be back with the Slicky Boys. Let, let me let me tell them. Uh, you know, hold on. I think they're on, they're on the way back. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's been a while since we right. These guys are on Jim Henson's Wi-Fi. Yeah, pr pretty much. Let's take a break. A sponsor. And we'll come back. Since 1992, Generation Records has been a mainstay of the New York metropolitan area music scene. Today, they offer a diverse selection of new and used rock, jazz, indie, hip-hop, punk, hardcore, metal, blues, soundtrack, and reggae LPs, as well as t-shirts, posters, and other merchandise. They buy used record collections and music memorabilia and will pay you top dollar for them. This calls made such collections in the tri-state area. Call or email generationrecords at gmail.com and follow Facebook and Instagram. Hey guys, Vlad from Organic Grill. As you can see, we're in a new location on West Third Street, right by Blue Note and Comedy Cell. The place is bigger, kitchen is bigger, we have more varieties, more food. We are looking forward to treat you guys with great dishes. All Hardcore Chronicles, welcome to, to Organic Grill. We are going to serve all the events as we usually do. And we are happy to see you guys. Peace, what it do? Welcome to NYC Comics at 117 Main Street, Dobbs, Surrey, New York. I'm Debo the Pro with my homie. Lee Farley. Welcome to the spot. Specializing in yesterday's and today's comic books, rare CGCs, toys, collectibles. Got skateboards, old school tapes, Magic the Gathering, Warhammer. Video games, original art, original art pieces by your favorite New York City and worldwide artists. Let's go. Skate decks all day. We have a young reader section here for like 10, 10 and under. Uh, the pops. People love the pops. Star Wars. Star Wars. We are New York Hardcore. We always rep the scene. Let's get it off. And we're back. This is the New York Hardcore Chronicles live as we as we battle through some technical difficulties today. It's, it's been a while since we've had some of these issues. Let's talk about some upcoming shows. There is no show. There's no show on this sunday because this is going down this sunday is a live show at not the barry electric kids but at berlin at 25 avenue a this sunday channel 3 is coming to town celebrating the release of the channel 3 40th anniversary box set we are excited we are in direct support of them incendiary device it's gonna jump off tonight 
War Orphan with X Sick of It All, Richie Sip on bass, Slashers and Regicide. That's this Sunday free, all ages, Sunday matinee. A week from today, the New York Arco Chronicles Live continues its quest for world domination with Phil Demel from Violence and Machine Head. Moby for the three-year anniversary show, Sunday, April 9th. Sunday, April 6th, Kira from Black Flag, co-hosted by Joel Ghostin. Wednesday the 19th, Rusty Pistachio. Cynthia Ross of the B-Girls, Wednesday, May 3rd. And Theo from the Luna Chicks, Wednesday, May 7th. So that's all going down. Keep in mind, one week from today, we will be back with Phil. Also, in addition to this Sunday, the Channel 3 show, coming up after that on April 30th is Go Crazy Eddie, Down Low, Crippled Urn, and Chum Huffer at the Bowery Electric, and then Rampage Fest 5. These are all free shows at the Bowery Electric. Rampage Fest 5, seven, show, seven bands, two stages, upstairs and downstairs, Reaching Out, Cropsy, Extinguish the Code, Pink Mist, Sewage, Raid, and disguise and then our show in Tompkins Square Park Saturday May 27th with Rebel Matic, Leeway, Butterbrain, Winterwolf and Scott Helen's Guitar Me of One. There is a King Kings Never Die release album release event at Generation Records on June 3rd. And then my birthday, me and Steve Zing from Sam Hain and Danzig. Come on down. Our birthday bash is June 25th at the Barry Electric. Of course, it's a free all-ages matinee. Uh, he's dusting off his old band, Morning Noise. They're playing New York City for the first time in 35 years. I'm dusting off the high and the mighty. Yes, we're going to play Road Warrior and all that. Uh, Don Foos is coming in with his boys from Cleveland, One Life All In, Concrete Ties, and Chemical X. And then Dog Eat Dog is playing the Barry Electric on July 30th. Man, a lot of shows. Last but not least, Sunday, August 13th, another free show with the take Silence Equals Death Star Car with Sab Gray from Iron Crush, Maafa, and Mr. Pickle. First show in 10 years. That said, I want to remind everybody, I want to shout out my latest patrons, Bridget Holmes, Jay Banks, Chris Dominico, and Joshua Sanders. Please support the show. Um... Those that asked for a T-shirt, uh, those patrons asked for one of the free T-shirts. They got mailed out today. Robert Hogg, your Agros records that I got you is a. Also, if you're watching the show and rerun, there is a subscribe button right there. Please subscribe, subscribe to the show. Also, um, follow me on Instagram. I haven't said that in a while. Uh, follow on Instagram at Stone Films NYC, please. Support the show. Support the people that uh, support you. Oh, yeah. By the way, DJ, you know who's DJing on Sunday? Paul Bearer from Sheer Terror is DJing the show on Sunday. So this is going to be really great. Um, I think that covers everything. I hope that covers everything. Let me just wipe the slate clean. Um, there you go. Let's uh, let's continue in our quest. Hopefully, uh, we have better luck. Better luck this time around. Um, we're gonna we'll ask questions uh, in in a bit. Um, is that right? Are we deciphering? OG is slang for someone or something that is an original or an originator, and especially one that is highly respected or regarded. I guess that's it. OG. I think OG stands for, isn't OG for original gangster? Is that right? Maybe Tom Lyle knows. Is that right, Tom? Is it original gangster? <laughs> sure. 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 Why not? Hey, how you guys doing? What's that? Good. This is, Kim used to always make these masks. Uh, we have the song, The Brain That Refused to Die. Cool. And so he would, uh, you know, Every couple of years, make a new mask. This one's from uh, pretty much the last Slicky Boys show. Is this yeah, there he is with a, is, with is that one of the masks? Yeah, the paper paper ones. There, it's real hard to see the guitar. They fall down and everything, but it was fun. It was, it was our little voodoo stuff. You know, a lot of fun to do that. Yeah, um, <laughs> I know thing you don't quite fit with everything. 
I know you guys. Um, oh, uh, you, you I, I know what's that, Tom? Ah. Boys, record. Tom, you're on the ball. And this one too, but I think this one's more recent, right? Uh, yeah, one? more recent than that. Than than this, yeah, this one's yeah. in. This one's like from when they start first started making records, I think. Right. <laughs> Did, did, did you guys really print up a hundred copies of Big your first hole. record? Big yeah. Hole. Yeah. It was, it, that was my fault. I wasn't trying to be quite collector-ish. We, we pressed, we pressed a thousand. And I, when I first, when I finally heard it, when the Clanton Philly sent me a, a pro, a, sorry, test pressing, I was like, my, my, I fell to the floor. It was sounding horrible. And I called him, I actually called him. I said, why does it sound so tinny and thin? And he said, well, that's what you sent us. I was like, uh, so I said, no, I don't want it. I don't really want it. I pay, pay you for it, but I just maybe give a hundred just to give out. And that was it. Yeah. Wow. DIY, right. DIY, we glued the You're covers. not talking about I had, this I had to glue the front back, on and back and we put flyers in and the first check we ever got that bounced from the, very, from the keg. I put a, a Xerox of that inside it so people could see. Was, it. was that, was that separated vegetables? Yes. Yeah. And that okay. was Marshall's idea with the cover. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, that was, we were very primitive at that point. <laughs> There's a twister uh, uh, in the back of, as a banner, the game Twister in the. Oh, yeah. yeah. As, a, as a banner. Oh, as a banner. Oh, that's, <laughs> as a banner. that's cool. Man, I'd that's forgotten that. Ben. I think you should be interviewing Tom here. He knows more than we do. Yeah, Tom's good but, like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, my, I, I, my memory is like, I got like out of the beginning of Alzheimer's. Unless you talk to me about rock music, then I am. That you can still remember. Uh, uh, I, I'm uh, like walking Wikipedia. Hey, could yeah. you guys, uh, um, Kim, could you talk about, um, I'm trying to, coming up to New York. Here's, here's a Dan Ceteria, um flyer. And, and, and I absolutely remember you guys being up in New York a lot. Um, any New York memories of those early days? Was, did you guys enjoy? Did you guys enjoy playing up in New York? It, it started off uh, really pretty bad the first few times we were there. It got a lot better. Um, there was the Paisley Underground thing in the mid '80s, and that sort of started to get better because there was kind of a movement there. Mm -hmm. um, did you ever we, play CBGB? Yeah, we played CBs once, of course, uh, with the, yeah, the Fuzz Tones or Tina Peel. But we also actually, believe it or not, we had the, again, total chutzpah to play Maxis, like our seventh gig we ever played in our life. Oh, right. We played Max, Ma uh, Maxis one night on uh, an off cool. night with the Planets. Uh, Maxis, Kansas City kids. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it was just just bizarre. I mean, like, we got more nerve than talent. <laughs> I don't know why we did that. <laughs> but it was cool. We Our experiences were the usual New York thing. We're like, well... You know, they'd be standing there like this, like, okay, come on. We've seen everybody show us something interesting. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, right. But we had good we, the cramps. One time with the cramps was a blast. They, oh, they brought us up with Tex, Tex Rabinowitz, the rockabilly guy. Um, sure. We played all Tex, kinds of oddballs. Oh, and Tex Rabinowitz and his rockabilly belly. Yeah. <laughs> well, he didn't have a belly then. He was, he was real sharp looking. <laughs> but, I mean, uh, when we were kids, you know, oh. we were. What is, oh, okay. right, what so is this, that. what is this place, the Marble Bar? Oh, that's that's Baltimore. Baltimore. that's like legend. That's like our legendary. You know, it was a it was a famous old building, and the bar was marble and leather coated, and all the famous Hollywood actors would stay there or visit. And there was a pool in another room, like the Marx Brothers played there. And uh, I wow, mean, that sounds a, great. And the bar was really like a fifteen foot, twenty foot marble bar, solid. Wow. But of course old time like most a good punky place it had fallen on hard times it was all abandoned and trashy yeah I, I think he must have just like cleared everything out of it and just you know somebody built the stage you know and that was pretty much it yeah the sound it was, was pretty good we played there twice I mean, the sound you know, was pretty good it was the coolest I, it, drew it was the coolest place it was just they loved us. We played it like once a month, all year in and year out. And wow, we, we played it with the Ventures. We played it the Rosillos. I mean, uh, Johnny Thunder's play. I mean, not with us, but it was just uh, oddest. And all the local Baltimore punk and hard. It was the only place played. in Baltimore that was decent. Yeah, yeah. But I love was, the I love the lineup. 
I, I'm just I see the good rats are playing there. De- and then Dead Kennedys. I see Gong is playing. And this is 1983. Yeah. Fucking yeah, that- Gong. It was the only place in Baltimore. It was that wow. or the it, Civic Center. Iggy because, actually played there. It? And if you saw this place, you go like, well, how did he get in? I mean, why would he, you know, and they had no heat and no, um, no, like, you know, air conditioning. So either way, in the summer, we, it was great because everybody would be dancing, swashing, and you're dripping and everything's dripping, but no heat. I remember the Rosillos when I met them years la- again years later after they played with us there. They said that was the stinkiest, worst place they ever played. There. I, re- I remember the Rosillos, the guy had that haircut that sort of came I forward mean, uh, like uh, sure. Eugene, you know, hairspray. Yeah, Eugene, and uh, and they were talking about man, like we just stop at rest stops and like people would give us the evil eye and be real rude to us <laughs> and shit. I guess it's just because we're dressed weird. I said, "Welcome to America." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. No, um, the boys never got in the van, though, did they? You didn't play out in the area, you know, like in Wisconsin or... Oh, right. oh yeah, yeah. We, we did a couple of times. Oh, yeah. But uh, just as far as, like, uh, you know, Minneapolis, you know... That way, but far. on the East Coast, we did, you know, Boston all, like, again, like once a month and oh, up okay. to Maine, and we got down to Georgia. Yeah, and uh, down in Atlanta, Athens, uh, that, oh. we played down there a few times. That cool. was cool. Because, you know, they had that scene with uh, uh, the B 52s and the oh, like yeah. band. Oh, uh, REM, I think, something like that. Yeah, yeah we didn't play with them, but you know, we didn't they fit came with to them. Our but... show. They came to our show. Oh. We, we sucked uh, that night. We were oh. all talking the night before. <laughs> <laughs> it happened. No, we, we, we did you the know, sleeping, uh, sneaky, sneaky van thing. Sorry, bro. <laughs> It's okay. Not to pull, not to pull it back in, but but I have this sure. kind of lined up. That was uh, that was really interesting. Uh, is that you guys? Uh, this is from uh, the book uh, uh, about the uh, the nine thirty club, oh, and um, yeah. you guys hold the record for the most performances at the nine thirty club. You played there 80, 81 times. Eighty one times. Eight, actually, it's like eighty four, eighty five. I think right. Yeah, maybe because yeah, maybe after the book, yeah. I, I we weren't thinking was, of it that was, way. Was no, the nine? Just... Did you consider? Did you consider the nine thirty club your home? Could you give us some perspective on that? More, more or less, but um, you know, there was a lot of other stuff going on there, so it wasn't like we took it over or anything. But just every, you know, at least once a month, and a lot of times we do a whole weekend. Uh, you know, so we do two nights there. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it's just sort of like we were at playing at the Atlantis before it be, became the 930 Club. So um, we were just sort of already Talk there. Dump. Talk about a dump. <laughs> I never, I never set foot in the 930 Club. Tom, what, what, Tom, any perspective on the 930 Club? It was my home away from home. I go there like two, three times a week to see bands. I saw. Every band you can name. I, I, I saw Killing Jokes first uh, U.S. tour there. I saw Birthday Party there. Uh, every Just name a band. I mean, they came to 930 Club was the place. And mm. all the bands from New York would come down, too. Oh, yeah. So all the yeah. nine, records bands like uh, Liquid Liquid. And um, so the, de- the Dead Boys there. Yep. Uh-huh. The band. I saw just about everybody there. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and live there in the early days. Plus, Tim and me, you know, we were on the permanent guest list too. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. we just like walk, you know. Kim was yeah. too. I know that for a uh, fact. Well, I, 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 like you. If I wasn't playing, I was down there. That's right. I got. And, I mean, oh my God, you know. I mean, even I mean, in, on this sh- this type of show, you know, the music, the people listening, and ours, and everything. It, it, we're not that kind of band, and we're not in. But like, say, the police. You know, they they played there. I know. It, and early. It's crazy. And, and it's like, what? And we looked at, we saw the upcoming shows. Of the, the British band from England is, that band is going to play in this little, you know, squat. Hmm. Oh my God, you know? <laughs> like, this is crazy. Drew, you have no idea. It yeah. was that, it, crazy. In the, the 19, late 1970s to like 83. Every night there'll be a band from England or New York or from wherever. 
What, what, and what, Tom, expl explain, explain the reference here. Mark Pino says 930 Club Hallway, always kind of terrifying. What, what is he? Uh, uh, maybe he did or what is something. That? Maybe he met me. I don't know. There, there's a, like you come in the front door, but then there's a long hallway you got to walk uh, down and then you get to the club. Because if it's just sometimes a people would line up so there'd be a. Ah. Uh, it's like you have to you have to run the gauntlet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, eventually, Drew, a person was actually killed in that hallway. It was I think it was a reggae show, wasn't it, Tom? Or something was a yellow man or something. There was a guy killed there. I, eventually, I eventually. Didn't hear about that. I didn't. Hear yeah, about it was that. it was a funky. The the main thing is that, like like most clubs like the like CBGBs. The the number one thing was the talk about skanky. Was the you're asking is it bigger than CBGBs? Uh, uh, probably about CBGB? the same size, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a different layout. Was a it's better. a different layout. It's a different CBGBs layout. CBGBs was a better. But let me let me shift. ask you about let yeah. me ask you about this. The thing one thing about CBGBs and, and I know Tom, you can attest to this, is it had a really great sound system. The best. Yeah. It, it, it like they had, they had, CBGB's had a great fucking bass drum sound, but did the nine thirty? Did the nine thirty like have a good like? Is that what kept it around? Did it have a good sound system? Yeah, it was pretty decent, and and uh, you know it was it decent. It wasn't and, great. It was decent. It, yeah, yeah. It, it could be. Yeah, uh, again, it was also just they were so into bringing everybody in, and they understood the bands and understood the scene. And so so they, that's why everybody kept coming. It was it nice, was, it was big really... dressing room downstairs. Oh, uh, yeah, they bring a case of with the beer. rats with the rats and everything. Oh yeah, we got good pictures of that dressing room. <laughs> yeah, but they, you know what's the amazing? Staff was them. The staff was one of us. Yeah. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was important, that's... man, because a lot of clubs would treat you like shit. Yeah, like the yeah. Bayou. Be run by old men, but you know the the nine thirty club wasn't run by old men. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, late, but whatever. Right. All, all the all the stuff that we're talking about, it's like I, I don't know if you noticed that you know we do these shows here in New York uh, mm -hmm. at, 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 at a couple of places, and you know I've sort of taken all these things, all these sort of all the lumps that I all the all the all the nicks and, and lumps that I learned on the you know, and I put them my experience into doing these shows, and like you know one thing that I right off the bat. That, that I knew like that's important is treat the bands with respect, give them a fucking place to change their fucking clothes, yeah, you know, yeah. give them some fucking water, you know, let them know what's going on. And that goes a really long way in, in the music world, man, because I mean, especially, I mean, we're talking about when we're talking about here, late seventies, early eighties, like man, clubs, man, nine times out of 10, you know, you're dealing with clubs and the people that ran the clubs couldn't give a shit and they were assholes. You know? Oh yeah, yeah. There was a lot of that. And, yeah. yeah, but there were a few good eggs, though. There really. Yes. Yeah, there, yes. Absolutely. There was enough. There was enough like good people. Finally, where you know it was pretty decent most of the time. Most sure. of the club we, we played, played CBs. Cool. We played CBs fourteen times. Wow. Well, not as many as you at the nine thirty club. Well, but we love right. that. We love CBs. We just knew Hilly and us. We, you know, you know, it was very, it was very, they were very nice. Uh, hmm. You'd had to go elsewhere to go to the bathroom, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and Tom, I could testify to that because I, I saw you, I saw you at CBs maybe during the Joyride era and you guys were fucking great. At oh, CBs. What, uh, that I I know what show you're talking about. Oh, uh, it would do that show. There were people playing, having chicken fights. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, it was incredible. Yeah, wow. yeah. Hey, uh, hey, Kim. Let's talk a little bit about. Um, sure. I, I know. Uh, it, it, well, let's talk about the uh, that when I go to the beach. Video. Did that end up on MTV a little bit? There was. It, did that get a little buzz? He did better than that, uh, which was strange. Yeah. I mean, and again, people watching this, your show for the first time going, that doesn't look very hardcore to me. <laughs> that was the only beach song we did, but it was great. I mean, I enjoyed it, yeah. but it's, it, you know, again, like Marshall pointed out, everything and everything all in a big stew pot. But um, that uh, that got, we just missed winning. The, they had the very first contest, so, so early in MTV, the very first contest to see who'd be number one or get the, you know, we came in was second. That, was that the bait? Was that the basement tapes? Was that? Is, yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, basement? yeah. I'm not even sure if it was I'm that. Not, I'm not sure. It was so early. Right. We came sure. in second to some like 
bar band from uh, was it Cincinnati, I think. But anyway, because of that, we got in heavy rotation. So we used to see a billboard. It'd be really hilarious. We'd be up there on heavy rotation. And Iggy and stuff would be down below. We're like, what? But it was it was nice, you know. What nice. did you do with all that money, Jim? <laughs> yeah, well, you can tell by the fabulous clothes and everything. Um, I mean, did, didn't didn't you guys fall in with Twin Tone, and how did that come about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, actually, I don't know. What was that Dan? That's Chummy, I think. Did Chummy get? Oh, John Chambers. Chummy yeah. Chambers got a hold of him. Somehow got a hold of Twin Tone, and you know, said, "Hey, why, why don't you well, you want to do an album?" We're like, "Okay." <laughs> But yeah, I, we don't have exactly the story of how how we hooked up with them, but uh, um, but yeah, it was okay for a while. But I don't know, we we sort of we got kind of in a bad shape with them, and uh, but I mean that's okay. I mean they they put it out. <laughs> yeah, they put it out. They, they got, got it around and yeah. everything, and so yeah. Uh, did did you, you did a couple of releases with them though, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. but, but was, uh, what did you do with all the money? <laughs> yeah, that, that that that's what Marshall was kind of beating around the bush about. <clears throat> yeah, but you know, you got to figure a uh, you know a small independent label in the days. You know, they're they're going to be hurting for money. Yeah, I, I like when I did my that, records. That label, that label did pretty good for itself, right? I mean, yeah. eventually, eventually, right? I mean, wasn't yeah. didn't it? Was, didn't they? Didn't they? Wasn't that the replacements and Soul Asylum and all that? Oh yeah, yeah. right. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, the re replacements were pissed off at them too, and I heard that they took their master tapes yep. from there and went and threw them in the river. Actually, threw them in the river. Yeah, a band pissed yeah, off because yep. they were so pissed yeah, off. Really? Twin that could happen. I mean, yeah, I'm still friends with the bass player for the Hipsters up there. We talk all the time, and he's the one who told me all these stories about that. I was like, whoa. Yeah. Uh, Robbie, Robbie White says Twin Tone spent all their time on the replacements. Well, yeah. I mean, that's oh, a big label. Yeah. They're big, their big thing. Yeah. But yeah. We got, they brought us up. We got up there twice and got to play at 7th Street and 1st Street, uh, you know, 1st Street, I mean, 1st and 7th Street Avenue and stuff, whatever. Sure. Yeah, the, the, the thing Seven that Street I... Entry. We played there twice. 7th Street Entry. Oh, yeah. 7th yeah. okay. Street Entry. What was that place? 1st Avenue. 1st Avenue, Avenue, right? 7th right. Street right. Entry. 7th right. right. Street Entry. Yeah. We did yeah, one yeah. of each. But you guys, well, that's pretty cool. You played up there more than us, too. Yeah, that's cool. They call that yeah. Minnesota Strip is yeah. what it's the, on. So The thing was that... Uh, their red, red light tr district is about two blocks long, you know. <laughs> but it was, uh, you know, whatever we have, complaints we have about things, uh, you know, it was a really good experience just traveling out there, oh, yeah. you know, meeting all these, you know, bands from that area and everything. So, you know. It, it was just a really, you know, kind of, it was great. A, a, a lot of times in this, uh, did I lose him? Could that be it? No. Uh, we, had, we had a good, we had a good run there for a minute. Yeah, that was awesome. It was like the old days. That was awesome. Hopefully. Yeah, I, yeah. All right. Oh, there yeah. they are. And they're back. Hey, you, you, know, you, know, you know, you know, you know, you know, it's interesting how in this journey of life, you know, we sort of, you know, yeah, the money was fucked and yeah, but, but we, we like, we, we like to think, we like to tell ourselves and, and that, that, but, but the experience we had and the life experience we had, you know, from that was just joyous. You know, it, it's a lot of, and especially in retrospect and look, I, I'm, I'm in the same boat. Like I, I put films out, and the distributors mm -hmm. fucking collapsed, and it's like that. You know, I don't want to mention. I don't want to mention what particular films, you know. But but uh, you know, and it's like, man, did I get fucked? But you know what? It, 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 you know, a lot of people saw the film, and the the art got out there, and 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 really, in a certain regard, that's great, you know. Well, that's, that's like an asshole. Yes, traveling means record shopping. Ah, right. Oh uh, yeah. So, and, and thrift shopping for me too. We we did that there everywhere we go. went. Yep. yep. Yeah. Uh, did, did you guys? Uh, you guys made it over to Europe. Did you guys toured? Uh, didn't you? Did you fall in with the French label? Yes. New that Rose. Was, that was and the and did, thing, and, and did, best thing ever for us as far as records or anything was New Rose. That's what I'm. That's what I'm getting at. That's what I'm getting at, baby. So so yeah. so. so you guys, you guys fell in after we sort of after we sort of hit a bummer. I mean, uh, my perception is that uh, you guys sort of uh, 
caught a little wind in France and they loved you there. Could you tell us tell us a little bit about your relationship with the French and going over and touring Europe? Well, we we'd had one. We actually had a record out in Germany too. That and it, I think all that stuff got around. The Europeans like a lot of you know how you see it for so many years from blues Americans all the way up. Sure, seem to like sure. American bands even more than Americans do usually, or, or in bigger numbers maybe. Uh, I guess unknown people. And um, we, we just hooked up and the guy wanted to do us and he was just, they they would promote over there and then records were, we, we heard we had a bin in Virgin Records in England even because of that. The French records and stuff, someone over saw a bin. It's like, well, we didn't even have one around here. I mean, other than Skip's records, nobody else. But they brought us over. Mark worked with them and dealt with them, I guess. And that was what an experience. I mean, here we are. The, the little we talk about the van stuff, doing the normal, you know, normal American bands, going bands and playing clubs, and getting over, going over there and getting treated like a big band. We got walked through customs. They, they escorted the label, sort of paid off customs, and literally and walked us through. They didn't expect any, inspect any of our stuff or equipment. And the, the last wow. guy they did was Michael Jackson's tour. They same people got, got pull, pulled in through and. Then we get there and we're on French television, French national television news that night. Yeah. They came and, they came and shot us at the club. We had to do a setup and do a lips, you know, a song. And we go back to our hotel room and we're watching and say, wait a minute, why are we, we're not like police or something. We're on television. And everywhere we got, we had a buffet at our, at our thing. And then we got taken out to dinner afterwards. I mean, very French, you know, very elegant. It's like, we're not, you know, we're playing in Boston at, at Cantones when they're not going to take us out to dinner. <laughs> you know, what? And we, oh, we had a, we had a van. They provided us with a van and, and a book. That emotion. We playing. I'll it's second like, that emotion too. Europe what? is just like, yeah, a different, a different world, man. And they, yeah. they just, they, you're talking about the appreciating. They, they like bands and they will treat you nicely. And I'm not gross. We're not. We didn't have our brown M and M's writers. We didn't have any writers today. We didn't know what any of this stuff was. Just, <laughs> I wanted tea every night, so they're on the you know in the back room with be tea. It's like, wow, you know, we tea. didn't. We weren't walk through customs, but when we landed in England, all we said they all we said at, at customs was we they said why are you here and we said we are we lied and we said we're there to record. Oh. And they said why did you come to England to record and we said <laughs> because it's England. <laughs> okay, come through. Oh, that's, yeah. okay, that's, that's a good. Great. I can remember that one. Too bad the bad brains didn't remember that one. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Uh, Ray bad. Hogan. Ray Hogan says um, I interviewed dozens of blues and jazz musicians that say the same about of Europe. And oh. yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, uh, you know, absolutely. I mean, even going way back, right? I mean, everyone will look at Jimi Hendrix, right? I mean, Jimi Hendrix, uh, you know, yeah. couldn't get a. Couldn't get arrested here until he went over to, you know, went over to the UK and connected up with Chaz Chandler and uh, and all that. But but no, that that's great. It, it, and and uh, it makes me really happy that you guys uh, at least got a little love and 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 got you know and. and uh, did, I'm really did, happy to hear that too. I never heard yeah. that story. I'm really and, and we and we most of the time, you know, there's always going to be a few places, but we had really and again, you don't know what you're going to hit, right? You can yeah. just say we get there and, and the audiences are wonderful. I mean, in Germany yeah. and stuff, they're like oh, screaming and, and bashing the stage and everything. It's like, wow, this is cool. <laughs> so, so, America, America, so it was America. It's it was a nice. Opposite. It was a nice tour. Oh God, that sounds yeah. great, Kim and, and, and Mark. That that's just really good to hear that you had that experience. Oh yeah, yeah, it was good. I, did did I, uh, so that 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 record that was that record fashionably late? Was that was that the record? Yeah. Yo, uh, I, 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 go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, you fin I'm, I'm not sure if, if it was finished or, ye well, you know, we were also putting out, you know, EPs and singles or whatever, and uh, they, they did put out Beach single and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, I can't remember. I can't remember. Uh, mm -hmm. It could have been right before, but it was right around that time for sure. You know, I have to say that listening, listening to the catalog and listening to the material, and, and and I know this song is like a bit of an anomaly, perhaps, but I I I really really enjoy the song "Your Autumn Eyes." Oh, weird! I wouldn't think. No offense, I wouldn't think. I mean, I'm glad. I wouldn't think a hardcore show, which that's about far from. Anything. Well, 
we're we're not just a hardcore show here. You know, we 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 sort of we our, our roots came out of hardcore, but we 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 get into a lot of stuff here. We 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 well, get that's, into that's a, really but, cool. But that's really cool. But yeah, that, I, that really. It, it, yeah, I like that track a lot. Oh, thanks. I, I I wrote most of it. Marshall did a lot of the music that I couldn't finish. I'm real good about that. I come up with riffs, and he he's a good gluer. But yeah, he he came to practice with the 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 chords, you know, the basic chord thing, and it's like. Wait, we got to turn that into something, man. That's that's a good one. Yeah, and yeah it's, it's very cool. What do you got there, Tom? What? Um, Did what you, you grab talking? something? Uh, no, I was just listening. Oh. I, I think oh, okay. I thought it was. <laughs> I'm, I was on my phone. I was looking for the song. That's all. Oh, 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 oh. okay. Well, I appreciate that, Drew. Thanks. Yeah, no, I I, I kept coming back to it. It's like. Is uh, it really... All these records behind me aren't all hardcore records, Ken. Oh, I, I know. It's the same. It's the same with me. I Men cannot I, leave I, like bread alone, you know. Yeah, I collect. And, and by the way, them. by the way, those gold records on my wall. I was wondering about that. None of them. Are, none of them are hardcore records. <laughs> they're they're actually 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 rap. That's Run DMC. That's Onyx, oh. and and that's Typo. Those are all those are all uh, gold records I got from uh, 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 music videos that I did for those bands. Oh, that's so, cool. Very yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> is that right? Robbie White says, I get requests for your autumn eyes on my radio show. Oh. It, it reminds me, you know, it reminds me of the, you know, I, 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 you know, I like that. Um, do you, do you guys feel that, um, somewhat of an anthology is that, is that a valid representation of the band? Marshall? Yeah. I, I think we should put that out again. Cause, uh, yeah. Um, can you please? Because people ask me about that. Oh, yeah, yeah. We should we should put that out. Uh, Mark was the one who did that, and uh, so we'll have to bug him to. The to, prices, you know. the prices go, going up. Yeah. In, in oh. the market, you know, people would like to see a reissue of that. Yeah. You got to you, you you got to put it back out before it starts going for too much money, you know. <laughs> uh, I I still I still like to speak of people to show the postcard from the day that Marshall put together a uh, live stuff. I, to me that's our sound. That's the way we really sounded live, all fast, 100 miles an hour right. and tight. That that's that's us. As I remember Hey Marshall, what kind of guitar is this? Oh. It's a, a Les Paul Jr. but uh, I put an extra pickup in it. Is that right? Uh, uh, Fifty-eight. And wow. speaking of, speaking of Danny Gatton and Telecasters, uh, I went to his shop and he was had a shop where he was selling guitars and fixing them up, and that's where I got it. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, <laughs> I'm yeah. learning stuff here too. Do, do Do you still do Do you still have this guitar? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yep. Really? Down in the basement. Down in the basement in a case. We don't get rid of our guitars. Oh no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. We're you know, we are none of us were into any any hard uh hard drugs where we had to keep pawning our equipment. None of us. No, uh, if I if I got it, I'm like I have everything from my childhood still. I mean everything. Like, you still got that Les Paul? Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I know 50, I know I know, I know, top. I know this is a later shot, uh Kim, but I couldn't figure out what this is what is this you're playing here? Oh yeah. or isn't that's that? my that's my general everyday one. That's just a duo sonic, basically a Mustang, but duo sonic was my really everyday thing. Oh, it's a Gibson? No, no, Les Paul. No, oh. no. Fender. Fender. I'm sorry. What? That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, it looks like a We're jet. getting tired. Sorry, Fender. <laughs> what, it's a, a weird angle. It's kind of hard to see. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was it's, like, what? I was trying to figure out what is that? Yeah. It, it's, um, I'm, I'm actually working on a new one now. <laughs> Another new old one. Yeah. But yeah, I've played everything from my. My fifty-two Les Paul to a uh, gold like top. A, that. You're like a flat neck or a rounded neck, like a Fender or a Gibson neck. What do you on like which that? one? On any guitar, do you like uh, a flat normal neck? Fender neck? Yeah, normal. Hey, Fender. Round. He always goes for the Fenders. Yeah. And, and a lot of times, like Mustangs, Duo Sonics. Yeah, they're they're, they're what lightweight. About you, Mark? What about you, Mark? What's go What's going on here? What's this? Oh, oh right. that's that outfit, that's man. That Les Come Paul. on. Come yeah, on, that, that it's it's not still I it wasn't pants, wasn't painted when I got it, but it was a believe it or not, that's a fifty-two gold top. Oh, oh man! Yeah, it's all every part in it is original except, unfortunately, for the neck. I bought it from a DC Garage Band guy uh, for four hundred bucks. <laughs> four hundred? Yeah. All right. Whoa. But and, and I've tried playing the gigs, but it was just too damn heavy. I wasn't used to Gibsons, but don't worry, I still have that. <laughs> Wow. And those pants, 
Uh, yes, all the pants too. Oh God! You, 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 you know, you, you know what? You know what, Tom? Those pants are in the league with with John Stabs. Uh, yes, the, the, the vertical the, 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 we, we used to call it. We used to call it. What we used to call those like the rainbow slacks. The Boston crew, we used to call those the rainbow slacks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah nothing on it. Over stab a big time. Yeah. Yeah, man. I, I miss him more than probably most of all the DC people who passed away. He, that was Every day. Well, yep. He was my brother from another planet, you know? So. <laughs> yeah, John and me always got along great. <laughs> can, can you guys tell us what were the wank tones? <laughs> you want to take that, Marshall? Uh, <laughs> that's a good picture. You know, we were talking about in the early days, we'd play anything, and a lot of stuff we would play would be rockabilly. So eventually it got to the point where we had so much original material, we were like, let's just make another band, you know, to do the rockabilly stuff. And uh, and so that's what we did. We called it the wank tones. Yeah. And... Uh, Dress different, and yeah, we d completely dress different. Go different, for a rockabilly different look. Different equipment and the same. We play open for ourselves. We we actually were stupid enough. We bring different equipment, <laughs> and sometimes yeah. bales of hay and everything, and put them on stage. And a lot of times, people didn't know who we are. We we'd hear people saying like, well, "What's this band? They're you know, I hear they're opening for the Slicky Boys or something." It's like, and then, as soon as we came out, every now and then people would be like this, like, well, "I think that's the same band." <laughs> yeah. All right, true, right, true right. story. Yeah, but hey, Ray, Ho Ray Hogan, I'm not sure what you're referring to here. Drew, what was the story of the smell that came in selling a priceless guitar? Are you talking about the, the are you talking huh? about the story that the Gibson 59 Les Paul story I told that I that I bought for 20 bucks? Let me know and I'll I'll Ooh. tell the story again. 20 yeah, bucks. I'll tell, <laughs> yeah, there's a story too. I think that's what he's if, if that's what it is, I'll tell the story again. It's it's a, it's a, it's a pretty brutal uh brutal karma story mm. um th that said um did 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 the slicky boys did did you oh, oh yeah okay yeah he says yeah so so here's the story here's here's the quick story right <laughs> here's the quick story of this uh, uh so uh tom you remember uh, uh, you know there used to be a record store right on saint mark's called free being records and in 1982 or three, I was in Free Being Records, uh, you know, going through the records. And, you know, it was like a dingy kind of record store. And somebody comes in off the street with a guitar case and says, you know, anybody in here, you know, anybody in here play guitar? Anybody look, want a guitar? And I said, yes. I said, yeah, well, what do you got? And, and, and he puts it on the floor and he opens it up and it's, it's a Les Paul. Right. It's like a, it's like a, I mean, I didn't know what the, I didn't know at the time until later that night, I looked at it. It looked to me like the guitar that Ace Freely plays, you know, it, it was a Suds Les Paul. I said, yeah, all right. Yeah. You know, you know, what do you want for it? He said, give me 20 bucks. Right. Ugh. So, so I gave the guy, I gave the guy 20, I gave the guy 20 bucks for it and got this, this guitar. And that night, you know, we, we went to 48th Street. Remember, we buy guitar on 48th Street, like all the guitars in the window and this and that. Turns out it's like a a, 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 a very early um, uh, sunburst uh, uh, Les Paul, right? And um, so soon after, I, 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 I lend it to somebody and, uh, and it gets stolen, oh. right? It's stolen, I never see it again. But the moral of the story is here, you buy stolen instruments, don't, you know, don't expect any righteousness in this world. And, and really, it's like, you know, obviously the guy probably busted a car window and just pulled it out and was just looking for a fix for 20 bucks to sell a guitar. And you know what? You know, if you play into that game, you know, what comes around goes around. And like, mm -hmm. you know, th there's nothing more insidious. There's nothing more insidious than, than, you know, buying a stolen instrument. Nah, didn't, didn't, didn't the bad brains have their whole truckload taken away one night in New York? Or they were parked yeah, think, and they- were, Yeah, I think. I, I think so. Is, it, know, is it true? Ruined. Is it is it true that you guys referred the bad brains to Don's inner ear studio? Is that true? Not exactly. It was, they came into Skips. It's pretty ah, close. They came right. into Skips. And, yesterday and today. Yes, sorry, store. yesterday. And they gave them ah. a demo tape they made 
and then skip like, you know, thought, hmm, got to sign up. So he paid, have them, he called up Don, he wants to have Don record them and he paid, paid Don to, to record them. And then he paid me, no, didn't pay me, <laughs> asked me and uh, what our ba- one of our bass players at the time to go and record them. And yep. typical bad brains, they went to my mother's house for some strange reason, instead of heading towards communication problem, right? Heading to the studio, we were there for hours and our bass player, Howard, had to leave. And so it just left me, which producing records. So, <laughs> so they showed up there and then that's how we produced their first seven songs. <laughs> wow. Okay. Which was a trip. But we, we knew the Bad Brains from earlier than that anyway. We were the first ones they played with. Would, 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 would that be at Madam's Organ? <laughs> no, way before that, actually. we Really? First gig with Mark as our singer and the first uh-huh. gig with the Bad Brains out in public was in Baltimore, and of course, perfect, Oddfellows Hall, and with one of and Baltimore what was, was the number one company. What Oddfellows was the name of the Bad like Brains? What was the name of the Bad Brains before they called themselves Bad Brains? Tom, you remember it was it Mind Force yeah. or something? Something like that. That's right. Oh, they were yeah. a prog band. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. Jazzy. Jazzy, like, oh, band. jazz yeah, fusion band. Jazz fusion yeah. band. Which makes that, sense. That's what I right? was. Yeah. Yeah. It does. It makes sense for that's sure. Kind of what I was doing. Before, yeah, before Slicky Boys, I was sort of going to jazz prog stuff. You know, I didn't know what I was doing. I'd like, I remember I wrote the song that went like, you know, just over and over again. I was like, yeah, like, like, gen- like Gentle Giant, like Gentle yeah, Giant, or, or like, that's what he yeah, yeah, he or, or, or like, yeah. or you know, scenes from scenes from a topographical, you know, Ocean, uh, yeah. Thing. Yeah. All right. So before before we take a, a, a quick break and we'll come back yeah. and if anybody has questions, get ready to post them. Any questions uh, for Slicky Boys or, or or for Tom? But I want to say Mick Thompson says, got my boss to book you guys at Lucky's Bar at Radford University at about oh, yeah. 85, 86. Awesome show. I stared at Marshall's <laughs> fingers all night trying, <laughs> trying to learn the lead, forgot to tell me why and other riffs. Uh, <laughs> that's great. That's really cool. <laughs> Yep. Awesome. Yeah, Marshall's are uh, mind power. It was they were called mind power. Oh, thank you, thank you. Wow. That, that that that's what it was. Hey, you guys, let me take my last sponsor break, and let's come back. We'll take some questions from around the world. Okay, great. We'll see you, see you, see you in two minutes. Don't go anywhere. Well, there you have it. Glad we, I glad uh, things calmed down. This is the New York Hardcore Chronicles live, and we are sponsored by New York Hardcore Comics, the Organic Grill, the Texas Silver Rush. DTFM Vinyl Distro Generation Records, 126 Hardcore Clothing, and Upstate Records. They're a New York-based DIY independent metal and hardcore label founded in 2017. They broke the scene. They broke into the scene with their inaugural 26-band compilation in 2018, and since then have churned out over 80 releases in their brief five-year history. In 2023, look for new releases by Mark Rizzo's new band, Revenge Beast, Call from Earth Crisis is Freya, Fury of Five, Angry Corpses, and a few more surprises that are in the works. Check them out at www.upstaterecordsnewyork.com and use the code STONE10. That's S-T-O-N-E for 10% off. Come on now, last but not least, DTFM Vinyl Distro. Looking for extreme music? DTFM Vinyl has got you, my friend. Located on 13th Ave in lovely Fargo, North Dakota, we have the state's best selection. Punk, hardcore, metal, ska, oi, and more. Can't make it in? Shop online from anywhere in the great U.S. of A. at www.dtfmvinyldistro.com. DTFM Vinyl, where the policy still is and always will be death to false metal. Uh, That said, hey, just a quick reminder. um, There is no show on Sunday because... We are down at, not the Bowery Electric, it's at Berlin. Berlin, mind you. 25 Avenue Way, free all ages Sunday matinee with Channel 3, ID, War Orphan, Slashers, and Regicide. And we will see you back here a week from today. Rescheduled from a while back. Righteous man he is, Phil Demmel from Violence and Machine Head. That said, if you have any questions, anything, any any scuttlebutt, um, please. Post some questions for for our today's guests, um, Kim and Marshall from 
or or Tom Lyle from Government Issue. So here we go. Uh, let's get Deacon and Marshall more. back yeah. on. Hey guys, and Tom on. Um, uh, let's <laughs> see. Uh, <clears throat> this is sort of a region. This is Ray Hogan asks. Regionalism has been dying a slow death in America for decades. One exception seems to be the go-go scene in D.C. Were you fans? Uh, Marshall? Uh, I, I, I did like it a lot, but uh, yeah, I didn't, you know, actually see much go-go unless, you know, we were the right there, you know, playing with them. I, I think there were some go-go bands on that New Year's Eve thing we did. <coughs> Post office. Oh yeah, yeah. For but sure. uh, yeah, yeah. It was a completely different scene. Yeah, anyway. we. I wasn't. That's not my kind of thing. No offense to it. it just we played a show. Sound. We played a show with Trouble Funk. Oh. Yeah. And Minor Threat played a show with Trouble Funk. Sure. Um, our show. Um, the cops shut. Uh, we played, and then the cops showed up and wouldn't let Trouble Funk oh. play. Oh. And the second time it was at Georgetown University. And the trouble funk played, and they wouldn't let us in the building. <laughs> uh, well, well, our, our only one with that was we were supposed to play with going EU. On there. They did not want to mix the colors, maybe, or so they were afraid the crowd would get too rowdy or something like that. Is uh, this at least got to play at Paragon Two? If you remember that place on Wisconsin uh, Avenue, uh, uh, it was here. a it was a black owned business in a black owned club there you go that show uh both bands got to play because it was at the old landsberg building and no one gave a shit about that yeah we, i we, think we, this was the i think this was the last ever minor threat show I yes think. it was yes it yeah. was i was i was at the soundboard for that show and i was so pissed off because the guitar sound of minor threat was so shitty and i couldn't figure out why but uh, the crowd was so big, I couldn't see the stage. He was playing through not a Marshall, but a Roland twin, Roland Reverb something or like, other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. like jazz a keyboard, chorus. like a keyboard amp. Roland jazz chorus is when right. they wanted to turn pop. You know, wanted that's when they did uh, uh, good guys don't wear white. Sometimes good guys yeah. don't wear white, blah, blah, blah. Sure. You know, sure. Brian and Lyle were revolting. You know, mm -hmm. they wanted to not be hardcore anymore. And Ooh. I didn't know he was playing through a rolling jazz chorus. <laughs> Ouch. I was so upset. And a lot uh, of other people were too. Nevertheless, it was their last show. They were done. Yeah, they, yeah. Uh, um, uh, Kim is a question from Chris Spikey. How did how did their song get added to the film Back to the Beach? Oh, that's a good question. That's obscure. Uh, I don't think it went through Mark again. Um, I wish we'd been on the soundtrack. That would have helped more. But right. just I think they, they needed some extra background music at the very last after the album and the music and the film was done and we were asked to do that. And it was like, cool. <laughs> Well, no, it wasn't. I was mean, it? the film wasn't completely done because we actually are in the film. Our song. Oh, our song is in it. Yeah. What do you do with all the money? Not on the soundtrack. <laughs> I don't think they heard me. <laughs> I asked, "What did you do with all the money?" That's <laughs> it, and and that just that just froze them in place. <laughs> oh no! Look at that. I thought I thought that killed them, didn't it? Oh, we're back again. Oh no, they're back. They're <laughs> sorry. They're back. Did you, did you hear what I asked? Um, did you hear my question? No, no, say it again. Did you, what did you do with all the money? <laughs> so. actually, actually, Mark did make some money off that. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, yeah. that's good. Yeah, yeah. I just thought it was kind of neat being in a beach movie because obviously, no, that, again, that's, that's, our, that's our era, my well, age, I'm, that I'm era of being with Frankie and Annette. Slinky boys. Right. I'm learning all these things about the Slicky Boys. I like this. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Um, but, here, you know, uh, I, I think I'd be amiss uh, to not to not ask this. I mean, in all fairness, Mick Thompson asked next reunion gig. <laughs> oh, and, and you know what? And, and, bef and before and before before we get before you answer that, uh, in doing okay. my homework, I read that Andy Gensler from Polestar, in his show of the year, his oh. uh, guy in his show of the year, 
said uh, the, his show of the year was um, you guys just recently, uh, uh, it, last uh, last June at, at Rosentine Hall in Maryland, uh, right. seeing you guys was his, his and everyone it showed it. Meanwhile, everyone's like Elton John, you know, fucking this, that. And this one guy's like uh, Slicky Boys at Rosentine show of the year. Yeah, we we like that. We really appreciate that. We, I don't think we played it, but I mean, we, I mean, we did it. But yeah, yeah, we we could sort of just barely do it. You know, it's, I'll speak for myself, man. I can barely play that stuff anymore. And you know, I practiced for a couple of months and got it together. But during the gig, man, I I was having a hard time, man. I just ah, uh, you know, keeping up with the beat. You know, a long time ago, it's just in your head. You don't even think about it. But, you know, at that gig, I had to think about it a lot. You don't play guitar every day anymore? Nah. Uh, no. I just, I, I, you, and, you know. I, at, at home, in the garage. <laughs> do you, is it, like, like what does it take to get the uh, Slicky Boys machine, like, churning again? Uh probably like so much money that we could all like take a month off you know have a personal trainer you know <laughs> don't, don't work and just practice 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 have say like five practices maybe yeah. but yeah yeah i mean we gotta we gotta if we could afford to hire the one that does mick jagger the one that trains him and all his dancing and exercises and all that every day we'd be fine yeah i've got myself yeah, a lot faster scary in shape in the last year yeah. or so before that that I was, but uh, I could I could do it. That thing of playing like at that speed for an hour and then in the come you know we take a break, come back for another separate hour. Again. It's a little tough. It is. It? <laughs> I mean, I enjoy yeah. it still. Yeah, yeah. It's and we and we did that reunion, that one six song, seven song reunion one we did that they're talking about. Mm -hmm. We did it as a benefit for another musician. Is that DC right? Who admi who admired who was had needed a heart operation, and that's why we did it. Mm. Used to play with Danny Gatton. Yeah, there we go. Get Danny Gatton again. His, wow. his drummer, his drummer. All roads lead back to Danny Gatton. <laughs> hey, and I did have one of my guitars, my uh, early 50s um, uh, Stratotone, repaired by him, too, also one time at his shop. <laughs> hey, I, uh, go ahead. What's a Stratotone? <laughs> oh, look, the, the only way I can tell people what it is is it's technically one of the worst guitars ever made, but it's kind of cool. It's the one, uh, if you look at old pictures of um, La Bamba, um, Richie Valens played it. And a lot of people like that. It's a little thing. And when I stripped, I mean, it was a mess when I got it, but when I brought it's it in, bargain, Gatton, I said, well, it's a bargain guitar or? Yeah, a little, the neck doesn't quite, you know, I said, I have a hard time playing it. It hurts my fingers, it's, it action's too high. Can you lower it? Can you do it? And he, and he went like this, well, you see this? He showed me and he turns it over. It's the neck and the body are one piece. There's no trust rod. You can't do anything. You can't adjust anything. I'm going, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> what do I do now? So I cut off. I asked him, can we cut like a trough in the back and drop the bridge down? So he goes, no, that would not work. And the intonation, I mean, he's a real nice guy. But so I bought a Fender Starcaster. You ever hear of those? Starcaster? Fender yeah. Starcaster. They're strats, but they're made in China. And I play it, it feels like, you remember the guitar is called a Taisko? Yeah, oh, yeah. Japanese, it has yeah, that yeah. action oh. and that feel on the neck. And this, these are guitars that kids learn to play on for the first time, right? Yeah, it should be Stratocasters they start on, not the cheap ones. You can play cheap right? ones later I'm when your fingers you, are limber. It's crazy I that know. when you're a kid, you buy the cheapest guitar you can find. But those are the hardest to play. Of course. That's, that's probably just, oh, sorry, I'll drew up here. And, and Steve it's Angela, okay. <laughs> guy who do our guitars and minor threats guitars, all the hard Oh, yeah. Um, he would say, he would laugh at us because he'd set up our guitars and he says, you guys aren't good guitarists because these guitars play themselves. <laughs> 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 the action really low and, you know, the intonation Let me is ask perfect. You, and, I got... I got a couple photos here. Uh, let me just ask sure. you, what's going on here? Ugh. That was, uh, that was <laughs> Emery, our bass player, and uh, and the women are just walking by. One of them is my ex-wife. Oh yeah, good Kathleen. Yeah. And uh, 
But uh, yeah, that was in Emory's drinking days. And not too long after that, he had to stop drinking. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I'm just, I just got a couple of photos here that, that sure. uh, were sent to me. And I just think they're, they're great. And I just like to, you know, maybe do a quick show and tell. How about this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Dan, our drummer. Uh, usually he's smoking at the same time. Yeah, <laughs> I do. Singing, drumming, and singing. I don't know. Is that during brain? Is he screaming or no? I scream. I don't know. What, what's what he's doing? Yeah. It? I don't know. Yeah. That's <laughs> nice songs, screaming songs. It's a nice oh, show. this one, this one is, this one is great. Uh, this looks, is this, is this a fairly, I, I'm not, I can't tell what era this is. Yeah, there are. Uh, what, what is this? So, reason, oh. Yeah, that's more modern. Yeah, that's. Uh, the 930 That's the new club. nine, the new 930. Yeah, they new the 930 club moved moved from their old small place to a really big place. Great, and, uh, great, the best clubs in the United States, I say. Yep, really, I'm serious. Yeah, yep. and the, the people are still cool, man. They yep. still oh. treat you right. And you talk about dressing rooms. It's like it's like fancier than my bedroom. It's really <laughs> when you used to know all of us. Drew and everybody all used to normal, normal skanky little rock clubs. That's uh, it's a, a surprise. Nice. Bunk beds and you know, I was like, oh my god. You remember seeing the Drew? You remember all the flyers from WUST Radio Hall? Yeah, and yeah. It was and he spent, oh wow yes, and he spent a million dollars, literally maybe more, to have it renovated. Wow, yeah, and its sound system is killer. Oh yeah. yeah. Or, more, that, or better, or more. Or one better. of the world's biggest sound systems. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Seriously. It's like, um, it Huge reminds me a little bit of... It's crazy. It, it reminds me a little bit of uh, Webster Hall here in New York that used to be the Ritz. Yes, was, it's was, about that Ritz. size. It's about yeah. that because yeah. that used to be a, a recording studio where they used to record uh, 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 big, uh, what do you call it, big bands back in the day. The back, you know, oh, in the fort. But it was a sound stage. Was it yes. sound true? No, it was, yeah. it was, it was a, at one point it was a recording studio. Hmm. Oh, you know? right. The Ritz, when I was younger, when we played there, I thought it was the biggest place. I yeah. thought it was playing Madison Square Garden or something. Yeah, yeah. I don't there now, it's, 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 it's okay. Sorry. <laughs> it's I'm sorry. trying to find... Oh, Do you guys ever play up in New York to the Ritz at the Ritz? Not the Ritz, no. no. I don't think so. We did Great Dance Tyria and Club. What's it? Fifty Peppermint Lounge. Peppermint Lounge. You played Peppermint yeah. Lounge. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Oh yeah. Yeah. Thought that was yeah. cool. <laughs> You're very cool. Irving Irving Plaza. Irving Plaza. We played several. Irving Plaza is still a great place, by the way. Uh, oh, I just okay. got I got, I just got a text. That's why I took my eye off it. We are playing Irving Plaza. I just got the text from wow. the promoter. All oh, right. So yeah, we're, cool. we're, we're, we're playing a, a show at, at Irving Plaza. I just got that text five <laughs> minutes before you said that. That's funny. Irving Plaza is a decent place. The management's okay and yeah, not the best because they're kind of it all. You know, it's all about money. You know. Well, it's they, a live they, nation room. It's a live. Na it's a live nation room now. Yeah, oh, they got oh, a lot okay. of money to keep those places open so. these days. Well, big cities yeah. is expensive and hard to do. Yeah, it's not like they can pay yeah, their rent in uh, cash. You know? Hey, I want to show you something real quick. Uh, Please, this is like some Iggy Pop punk magazine. Yes, I, I, I have that. I have that. Yep, go and, on. And uh, uh, bands in the uh, in 1974 to 76. Let me see if I can get us in there. Uh, yeah, there we are. Oh, no, I got it. I got it on the screen. Oh, cool. Go ahead. There you go. That's the first time I've seen this is today. Literally, I didn't even know that existed. That's really so, nice. So, and so this is, I, I saw this. This is, this is a very, very cool thing. Uh, it's like an, an animation. It's like, and, and, and like a punk rock for around from 74 to 76. And the band that is representing Washington DC is, is the Slicky Boys. Unbelievable. And I, yeah. I like it has the gizmos too. I love them. They were like, oh big, yeah. Big, Who big is that? Connection with, connection with DC and me. Yep. The who? The Gizmos. They're DC? No, no, they're but the guy, the main guy who formed it, who we call to this day, he got the nickname Gizmo. He moved before his EP even came out, he joined the Marines out in a in a, a fit one night. So he was stationed near DC. So we connect that's how he connected with us. And him and me and I really were at the first Ramones ever show. And 
and then went on from there. That then became the Africa Corps, and I recorded them, and that that's how the Africa Corps became. It was from all connected to the gizmos. Yep. <laughs> What? Good. That said, oh, here, here's. Doesn't this look like a strat? Yeah, exactly. Yes, of course. It's not. <laughs> what is it? It's a Fender Starcaster. It weighs about a hundred pounds. I've oh. never heard of such a thing. It's made in China. I thought it'd be lighter. <laughs> Can I see the headstock? Huh? Huh? Wow. Yeah, he, you figure it'd be they'd use lightweight wood. No, they, use, <laughs> they could find in the back, you know, or something. Maybe, you know, whatever was, you know, it's it's. Uh, I don't know what they use. It's very oh. difficult to play. It's good for kids to learn and strengthen their fingers, right? Bloody, <laughs> like we went through. Yeah, Paulie Porkchop says. I saw Biohazard open for SOD at Irving Plaza in 1996. Oh, I just want to, regarding that, I do this. Guess who I just got a call from to open at Irving Plaza. <laughs> anyway, um, funny you should mention that band. Uh, I love this. Battle of the Garages from 1981. Oh, really? The Vox Psychedelic Summer Tour. And I see... You guys playing the dates, you played uh, D.C., Baltimore, and Philadelphia, and New York. Oh, and Boston. Oh, Boston. Oh, my God. Where did you play wow. in Boston? I, did I come over? It, some it, of doesn't work, have, yeah. it doesn't have the venues. It doesn't some say Some of the dates venue. got canceled as we showed up. <laughs> um, oh, that sucks. was real hard. Back then, that was real hard. That was, that was the first garage tour ever. I mean, of the modern era. That was the first one ever. And some of the cities weren't. I don't know. I just, I mean, well, someplace we pulled up and the guy from the hipsters ran, ran to the car saying it's been canceled. It Probably canceled. Philly. Might have been Philly. If we had a terrible time in Philly, we were not accepted in Philly ever. Why? I don't know. Close by. Yeah. Just one of those things. Been like us, so. Philly, Philly's, a, Philly's a tough town, man. I know. You know, they were not very welcoming to the punk rock community at first either. Oh. No, they're, they're a bunch of rednecks showed up with baseball bats at a black wow. flag show, and it was like, oh god, it was ugly. yeah. Nancy Nancy Burrill Nancy Burrill tells that crazy story. Like it was like the whole neighborhood turned out to like like with bats to like fight like these interlopers in the neighborhood, you know, the, like the Trans Am driving uh, kids that would <laughs> beat up punks in Georgetown too. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, Dan, Dan says it was Storyville in Boston. Oh, hmm. I don't think we played. I never that. heard of that place. That was. Oh yeah, I have. Been. I think I that's have. one got canceled. I think so. Yeah. Right. Right. I, yeah. Well, hey. Fellas, yeah. uh, I want to thank you so much for. I, I'm I'm glad I'm glad the dust settled and I'm, I'm glad we we got calibrated. Um, I want to thank you guys. I want to thank Tom. Uh, I don't Tom, know what invited me, but thank you so much, Drew. Man, I had a great <laughs> time. Really, it's great to see Tim and Mark, and just awesome, man. That's great. Tom, anybody you want to thank or shout out? My mom. <laughs> My mom. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on, Tom. You're always thank Drew. Me, man. Drew, I want to thank Drew. Thank yeah, you, thank buddy. you. Thank Drew and everybody that helps you on your show. It's really cool. I like it. Yeah. Thank Thanks, man. Tom, I'll talk to you soon. I hope so. All right. Take care. And you, you guys. I'm glad. I'm glad the dust, uh, the dust settled and everything. And uh, you know, we could get down to brass tacks. Anybody you want to thank, uh, Marshall? Uh I'm just so happy to hear that Irving Plaza is still going strong, man. That's just, you know. Well, yeah. It makes me feel I mean, good it, like 40 years later it's still going. You, you know, you know, it's, uh, you, you know, things change. You know, like my dad says, you know, one thing about New York that remains the same is it's always changing, you know. Yeah. yeah. But you know, you know, some, of, some of these venues, incredibly, there's a couple of them that, you know, they, 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 they get, you know, the wave goes in and the wave goes up, but Irving Plaza is still there. Yeah, amazing. Incredible. Uh, Kim, anybody you want to thank? Actually, I want to sound corny, but I want to thank all the Slicky Boys, past and present, because they put up with me a lot and did a lot and carried me along and had a blast because of it. So I think I'll thank them all. Oh, you know what? 
I, I got this. Just came in. Let, 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 let's let's do this for a second. Talk about playing with the Ramones. Uh, when was the first time? We played with them a bunch of times. I'm trying to think. What was the first? I, yeah, I, at a, we played with them down in Richmond, I think, at UVA. Actually, Dan Polensky would know, but yeah, uh, uh, yeah that was one. Um, we played with them a, a bunch of times around. Usually, played, the colleges, played with them at Hammerjacks, which was a heavy metal club at the, in those days. Oh, so I, I, I remember of, that place. Uni yeah, University sure. of Maryland. That was one of the best shows. Actually, we got a bit. Did, did you did you enjoy game. playing with them? Did 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 you did you feel did you consider them peers? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it's, you know, it's weird to think people are looking at your show, going like, "Well, you know, how's this obscure dinky wad band compared with the Ramones?" But back then, it really was much more of a of a group thing, and we we just we liked our show. We thought we put on energy and had fun and and got the crowd going. So the Ramones did too. So fun. and I loved I loved the Ramones so much. I have sixty five autographed Ramones records. No joke. Wow. <laughs> they didn't like when I did that, but they do have, I do have, I was, because I was at the very first DC show they ever played and everything. And, wow. and I got a, a folk club. A you, folk you, you, club. You, you know, I don't know if this is, I don't know if this is fair, fair, fair to say, but, uh, you know, when I'm doing a show and, and, and I'm doing my homework, um, you know, I, 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 I delve into the music and I had your music on uh, uh, right here in the apartment and my girlfriend, and uh, she commented, it reminds me of the Ramones. And I said, wow. I, I, I said, well, I didn't, I didn't hear it. I didn't hear it like that. I sort of, and, and, and I said, wow, you're absolutely right. It, it, it sounds like, you know, like, uh, like the, 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 the Baltimore DC sort of like, you know, version. version. Yeah. yeah. Hi. I mean, I no disrespect intended, but you no, know, I think more of our, li our live thing, our speedy live stuff, which I will compare more. The only one we didn't get along with the Ramones was their their uh, was uh, Mort, Mort, Monty? Monty Monty oh yeah <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> yeah yeah he was a tough he was a tough cookie man he's calmed down he's he's cool these days but he, yeah. he he's a he, he's a tough cookie yeah but um, then again oh sorry yeah, go, go ahead go ahead no, please go I, ahead. you know I guess if you had to sit in a van with those guys every day driving around you'd get pretty crazy too <laughs> you know that guy's story is that he was there from day one. I mean, he was there at, from day one. Every single show, he was there through through the through the whole thing, you know. So yeah, yeah. that said, hey, I want to thank you again. Uh, and, and listen, don't listen, Kim. Don't. I just want to say, yeah. don't sell yourself short because every DC musician that has ever been on the show has brought up the Slicky Boys with nothing but love and reverence, and I I mean that, and that's what made me dude i you guys were not on my radar screen but after about the 10th time i said who the fuck are these guys and let's get them on the show <laughs> you know well, so, i appreciate it and I, I appreciate them saying that thank you very much my, my pleasure kim Thanks and marshall so take take care thank you for being on i'll talk to you soon thanks for having us my <laughs> pleasure well there you have it the slicky boys and our special guest tom lyle on the show today yeah they were great n n nice guys I'm, I'm glad. Uh, thank you, Brian. Uh, thanks, Liz. Uh, thanks for everybody that tuned in today. Um, it's nice. A, a, a little bit different. <laughs> thanks, Dan. You know, a little bit. I, I don't get flustered anymore when there's a little bit of a challenge you know, with the technical stuff. You know, 260 shows in, uh, you know, so so I, I, I don't get I don't, I don't get too flustered. But uh, like I said, there's no show on. Um, on this Sunday, because we're doing a, a live event down at, the, at uh, Berlin, not the Barry Electric. But we will be back here a week uh, from today. So thank you all. Until then, do good things and good things will come. <laughs>